Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are out there. Greetings, my excellent friend. It's so good to see you. My name is Jeff Fritz, and today, today is December 3rd, 2020. We're going to write a little bit of code today. How are we doing there, chat room? Hello, hello. How's it going over there? Look, they're right there. Um, oh, a couple hosts coming right in at the start here. Tended Dinosaur 3, Wolf DM. Thank you so much for the hosts. Uh, Dukasoft is here. Uh, P Mash 2, good to see you. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for tuning in. I've got something in my eye. Oh. Ugh. Um, w Dorset 84, how's it going? Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, let's let's talk about writing a little bit of code today. We've been working on the Blazor Static Web Apps, and I've been putting together this idea of of Twitch clips meets TikTok, and and. I've really fallen in love with this project. It's something that I'm enjoying. I'm seeing I'm seeing immediate progress, immediate returns on it. It's it's a website, it's a web application that that folks are interested in. And and I want to push through. I want to get a bunch of stuff done on this today. And I think I think we can be really productive here. I think we can we can get to a point that we're we have minimum viable working right now. But I think we can get to a point where we have a comment system. Um, we we fix a little bit of the performance issue that we're seeing around virtualization of content, and and we can we can start inviting more people to submit clips to use it. And I think we'll be able to get through that today. Wolf DM, hello, hello, J Rose Guard, good to see you. Sok Yang, hello to you in Cambodia. Oh my goodness. That's a long way from where I am here in Philadelphia. Welcome in. Hello. Hey, Smab, how's it going? Um, I'm, I'm realizing as, as we get ready to head into the new year, I need to get more of those, those little hat badges made um, because uh, we'll have our first three-year subscriber starting, is it January or February? I think it's January. So I'm I'm gonna need to get some more hat badges made up. Ooh. You got a new gaming computer? That's pretty cool, Wolf DM. Awesome. It's always cool to get some new gear. Um, especially right here in the holiday season. It's always a treat to get to get new gear, new tech that you can use, you can get excited about. Um can you share some of the details of what you got? That'd be really cool to to hear what you have. It's also gonna be good for streaming. Oh yeah. Definitely. Hey there, Whitlock. Hello, hello. So let me head over. To, well, I'll, I'll get some music playing here in the background. And we'll head over. See, hang on. I was, this was the music I was about to start playing. You just got to go. that, that's, that's Overwatch. That's not the, no. That's not what we wanted to play. Um, I wanted some music to code by. Here we go. Um, and today let's play, let's play, this is called Judson. There we go. This is Music to Code by, it's, it's a bunch of groovy tunes. There's about 20, 21 songs in the collection that you can download, you can get your hands on that are, um, they're, they're designed to get you focused, get you in the groove so that you can just get stuff done. Scientifically designed, it's engineered with the right beats per minute to just help you get focused, get in the zone. Check it out, mtcb.pwop.com, where you can execute the music command and get your copy today. Svava's here, and, and she's got too many too many spreadsheets. <laughs> hey there, Mr. David in Portugal. Good to see you. <laughs> too many, too many spreadsheets. That's a thing. <laughs> I've, I've, I've jokingly said that um, VR headsets won't take off in enterprises until you can do spreadsheets with them. And yesterday I tinkered with using my Oculus headset with a Bluetooth keyboard, and I gotta agree with them. And typing and interacting with the browser um, is a little clumsy. Um, and part of me wants to be able to look down and, and be able to see through the, the headset to my keyboard if I need to check my, my finger position. And it, it's kind of clumsy to do. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I think we need to, to see a little bit more about getting, getting some business apps into VR so that you can be productive in a VR environment 
while collaborating and seeing other folks. And I think that's mixed reality. Yeah, that that kind of thing, I think, is you're right. Your internet is slow as a turtle. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry to hear that. You should be, because I'm a partner, you should be able to step down the resolution here and be able to at least uh, hear what's going on, if not be able to see what's really clear. Let me head over to GitHub here, and, and let's talk about the the tasks that we want to get through today. I'm going to put on my gunners. Um, I haven't even checked these. I usually clean them, get, the, get them wiped clear here before we get started, and... Did one of my kids run off with my with my glasses cleaning cloths? Who that? Tail learn code! Tally learn code just resubscribed for six months. Good morning, all. Good morning to you. And hey, didn't you just celebrate 500 followers on your channel? Did I see that last night? King, thank you so much for the six months of support. And we'll make another donation to Girls Who Code. Look at that. It's like I called for it and it's right there in, in chat. There we go. Yeah! Big congratulations to you on that. Oh, there we go. There's some info on Wolf DM's machine. It's an Intel i5 uh, 10400F with 8, eight giga, gigabits, giga, gigabytes of DDR4 memory. GeForce 10, 1660. Nice. Used to be a straight 720 as option. Now you're only getting 720p 60. Give it a give it a little bit here. It'll pop. It'll come through there. Hey there, you got sponged. Good to see you. Happy Thursday. Here's the tasks that that I've kind of outlined as what I feel is minimum viable for us to get the clip talk working and and at a point that um, I'm ready to unleash it to get more lots more clips, lots more folks interacting with it. Since this is a static web app. There is no server load on presenting and showing things. It's really more on <clears throat> it's really more of an interaction of how we want to cache and present data from the data store. And that's where the get clips virtualization bits we're gonna need to tune and get that working. That that's gonna be a key piece. But I'd like to work on the comment system today. Um I, I made some steps on the developer version widget. Um, we can get that into play pretty easily and make this um, make this a complete experience. So between um, the comment system, working on the virtualization, I think that's going to be a good four hours right there that we're going to be working through today. And the comment system, we might even be able to get through that faster. We'll see. We'll see. You had another you had another follow bot last night. Um, yeah, that's kind of crazy. I, I, honestly, I haven't had a follow bot in a couple couple months here. But when I did get them, I mean, I was up into the 20,000 number. And it's, yeah, just annoying. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for the... Just gifted one subs. Thank you for sharing that gift subs. And uh, Mr. David, congratulations. You just got a gift sub from our friend You Got Sponged. And we'll make another donation. To girls who code much appreciate um developer you have your first dot net developer interview tomorrow oh my gosh good luck with that um yeah it is pretty annoying when you get the follower bots coming through the uh twitch is trying to do more to stop those to limit those um i'm wondering if that's kind of one of the benefits of streaming in the morning like i do is i, I avoid some of those Hey, Robert, is that Robert Jan? Hello. Good to see you. And I've turned off all the follower notifications now. So the follower bots don't get any... There's there's no joy for them um, running on my channel now. So... I'm going to uh, I'm gonna lay out the, the project and the checklist up here above me. Um... Add a uh, let's call this a threaded comment system for clip talk. Um, add UI for the comment system, right? Um, create. Uh, I'm going to break these out. Uh, I need to create the 
uh, load function for comments on a single uh, on a single video on a single clip. Um, we need to create the add function for a new comment um, and create, well, we're going to want an edit function for an existing comment and we're going to want a remove. There we go. All right. Is that is that Leah Cassis? Is that how you pronounce it, or is it Lee Cassis? Let me know. Um, going through the .NET Conf talks. Congratulations on the event. .NET Five is .NET Five is is a pretty big deal. Thank you so much for the kind words. Um, we're pretty proud of it, and uh, we we expanded .NET Conf here in 2020. We were going to do it anyway, and and do three other um, focus events. Right, coming out of .NET Conf 2019 and the success we saw last year, we said, hey, these virtual events are, are, they're working more and more. So in January of 2020, we ran .NET Conf Focus on Blazor and spent a day, just one day, um, eight hours talking about Blazor. That was successful. So we did .NET Conf Focus on Xamarin in, what was that, March, April? That went well, didn't have this as much of a success as Blazor. But we said, let's do one more of these and see how it goes. And we did .NET Conf focus on microservices in July. And that went like gangbusters, went very, very well. So we had three of these events and um, very happy with those. And they fed into the, the full .NET Conf event that we had here in November. And, and viewership was up significantly over the year before we're very proud of that um and we're we're looking at at least three more events to augment the main event um in november but we're looking at at least three more events that will be focused around other .NET topics there was a suggestion of .NET conf focus on game development um, that's in discussions for the first one. There, there's been talks about uh, some other topics for the other two. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, data. We've got to figure them out. They're, they're out there. We've got some other ideas of how to, how to expand on this. Given, given how, let's face it, virtual conferences are really the way we're going to be for a little bit here. Um, so we're working on it. We'll get into that. Um, what teams should you tweet at to get a .NET flag where you can specify which SDK you want to use? Why would you need to use more than one SDK when you .NET new? Yeah, why would you need to specify multiple SDKs? Walter! Walter just resubscribed for 17 months. Thank you so much, Walter, for 17 months with us, and we'll make another donation to Girls Who Code. Your clients aren't using 5 yet. You want to practice with 5 locally. So you could put Global JSON just in the folder that you you want to work in, right? It Global JSON works in that folder and down. So yeah. Yep, that's the way to do it. How's it going there, Ultramark? Um, is it Pexy? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Pexy Paton Geis? Um, what kind of comment system are we building? We're building a comment system, a threaded comment system to go with our Twitch clip discovery website that we call Clip Talk. And it's the second item on my to-do list there. I've, I've taken this list of features that we want to complete and, and I really focused on the comment system one and created a couple of tasks you see there in the, uh, in the task list above me. So that's that's what we're going to be doing, and, and we're going to be reading data from Azure Table Storage and um, presenting it through an Azure function um, using a Blazor, a Blazor WebAssembly application. So um, let, me, let me open my um, Windows terminal here. There we go. 
Do, 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 do. Load up. There we go. Um, head over here. I'm going to create a new branch for this. Um, and uh, dash B. Feature uh, comment system. Right. This way I can work on it. Merge it all in in one shot. As I'm going through and committing and, and making changes here. Not a problem there. Um, yeah, the task list, right, tries to make it really clear. Here's here's the list of things that we're going to go through, and I'm going to mark number one as where I want to start, yeah, right? What does that user interface look like? Um, which means I also want to have some way to click into, right, and focus on one clip. So let me say to do active and work number one there is the one that we're working on first. <clears throat> And we'll we'll get into that. Okay. Um. I am doing that. All right. Good. Um, and I've, I've got voice mod up here in front of me. Um, there. Good. You want to ask a starter question about Blazor? Sure. We can do that. Let me close these out. Ultramark has a question for us to start here. For the best debugging experience, would I recommend WebAssembly hosted in .NET Core or just the regular WebAssembly template? Um, it, it'll For debugging? First off, if you're debugging, Visual Studio 2019 is really where you need to be uh, to get the best experience. It should work the same in both templates. I haven't tinkered with them. The debugging that I've been doing here with the uh, Blazor WebAssembly, the, with the Blazor static web apps, uh, has been great. I agree with SMAP. Move everything to the server and, and kind of share the files onto... Uh, a Blazor server application and you'll have a really fast experience. But I've been finding the .NET watch experience really good as well. Um, so I want to... I'm actually going to set up... Hey! Uh, is it... I'm forgetting what the hotkey is to split the screen here. Is it this one? Is it that? No. That... Um, no. I forget the hotkey does... Because they change... They they change the mapping of hotkeys in... How they get mapped in Windows Terminal. And now all my mappings don't work. Uh, Windows Terminal... Um, split... Vertically. My profile is completely broken because they, they changed the syntax of it. And there's no way to migrate from one to the other. And I'm just too lazy to go and migrate my settings um, alt shift equals and alt shift minus All right. so if I go back over here uh, alt shift equals yeah that see that didn't work right alt shift minus no no um, now I feel bad right Alt and the tab button will open like that. Uh, all right. All right. I really want to use. Um, looks like I'm doing Alt, Alt Shift. Not oh, rats. Can I do that? Well, that didn't work. Tried to do Control W to close, and that doesn't work. Uh, one more time into the breach. There we are. Right. Alt Shift. Ah, okay. Right. It doesn't open in the same folder. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna go into the the client folder, and I want to do. I should do it. I should do it horizontally. No matter. Uh, .NET watch run. And just leave it here running so it refreshes my browser as I make changes to the user interface. 
Um, question here from Curious Drive. And what do I think of SEO for Blazor WebAssembly? What are the best practices? SEO and Blazor WebAssembly are, are going to go together like oil and water because I don't think the um, I don't think the search engines are executing WebAssembly code yet. They only within the last few years started executing the JavaScript framework functionality, right? And and being able to parse those. So I think for SEO for WebAssembly apps. You're going to need to do right some of these stubbed pages like we used to do for JavaScript spas, where you have hidden text somewhere on the page that the WebAssembly app overlays and folks don't see. So, um, yeah, that's going to be a little bit of an issue. This isn't loading data yet because I'm not running the... I'm not running the API app, so I'm going to start this, and I'm not um, debug start. I'm not going to be changing my API yet, but I'm going to move. Um, I'm going to move this off screen so it's kind of pinned and it's hanging out there, so that it'll at least load my data and I can tinker with it. Come on, finish loading. Do 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 do. -do. There we go. All right. Um. Where to go? Here. So now if I refresh this, it actually should be coming in from HTTP localhost. I've been using the non-SSL version of this and it'll find my login and bring in all that stuff. Hey there, Screech Rat. Or maybe it won't didn't find me. Did I log out last time, I guess? Eh, maybe. Um, I'm going to try logging in. That should work. Oh, yeah. That's right, because we built the login button last time. Cool. That kind of works. Alright. I think we need to also clean up the following list. It doesn't write and figure out a way to do some, some style with that. Um... Right, maybe... Who dat? Chris Jones! Chris Jones just resubscribed for 27 months. Hey, Sharp Fritz and friends. Hello, hello. Thank you so much, Chris. And we'll make another donation to Girls Who Code. Um, I want to clean up the followers list display. Um... In, so we need to improve see, let's make this a task list uh, several steps several steps to improve this um, clean up the CSS um, by default let me add some value <laughs> coil twitch bot coil twitch bot hello thank you so much for the cheer I was cheered at by a Twitch bot. Thank you. Um, only show the um, channels I follow that have um, recent that have uh, yeah recent um, interesting clips to show. Let's just start with that. Um, um, provide. UI to show all all channels I follow and I want to put that no it is an enhancement and I want to put that on these enhanced features I want to finish this month all right thank you um, let me head back over to see I need to put labels back on some of these um uh, right like this this that yeah, I need to do that let me mark those as enhancements 
Um, I took a little bit. Um, and let me go to my milestones and zoom in on just these complete features. Features I want to get done this week. So, and comet systems where I'm starting here. Take care, Jason. That two and a half hour meeting, dear lord. Ugh. Ugh. Um, what I really should have done. Hang on. Right, this is where we're working. And I want to really put you right there. Okay. So what I want to do is when you click on the comment button here. Right, I feel like I want to show right here the list of comments. Eventually, I feel like there should be some way to zoom in and get just this clip. Right, be able to see just that with the comments nice and threaded and, and show some information about some of the folks that you follow or are friends with on Twitch that that like that. And I feel like that's a, that's a later feature. Um, I should probably record that though. Right, the the zoom in on one clip, um, the the one clip view, um, and that would have a dedicated URL. Um, uh, we'll probably want a social media card, social media preview card, um show show comments um, show total num total number of likes um, show some of your friends uh, twitch channels you follow that liked that video that clip right that's an enhancement that I think is much further out. That's future. But something that we need to get to. So. Um, okay. Um, that's not a bad idea. Maybe reuse the Twitch slug for the URL. That's not a bad idea at all. Reuse the Twitch slug. Net Jam Jr. has a question here. Oh my gosh, and Copper Beardy's here as well. Hello, hello. He just resubscribed for 23 months. Oh my gosh, almost two years. Thank you so much, my friend. And we'll make another donation to Girls Who Code. Uh, Net Jam Jr. has been trying out WPF and .NET 5 and Visual Studio 2019. has been having a lot of issues with IntelliSense code highlighting in the the squiggly lines that that make me need to restart Visual Studio. That's that should have been ready. Are are you are you on the latest version of Visual Studio? I might even be tempted to try the preview version. And definitely click that feedback button if you're running into this. Um, that should not be happening. You should be having a much better experience for that because it's. It's been working with .NET Core 3.1. Yeah, try the preview build. Um, yeah, I would try moving into the preview build. See if that helps. But that's not right at all. It shouldn't be doing that. All right, for right now, for what I want to do for showing comments is... Um, when you click into comments over here, load the comments and for this video and show it. Now, on the mobile experience, that's going to be different, right? That's something that I, I think we want to stack below the fold, or uh, I don't know. The latest preview build has strange performance issues. I always run preview builds here. See, I'm in a preview. Um... And I'm not seeing that currently, but um, thinking through this a little bit, uh, 
maybe I make the comment system that single view of the of the video right now right if you click into this maybe we make that the the single view maybe we navigate you to that right now that way we have it working just fine for it we don't have to make significant adjustments for mobile for um, for for mobile and desktop it's always the same yeah I think that's I'm, I'm gonna make a decision and and do that um, so let me do this let me go down here and I should be able to still use the same twitch player it won't be the same as my clip player but I should be able to use this same component here because I already built this component so that it has right it shows the thumbnail um, and we pass into it the slug the title the thumbnail URL that we're going to I feel like I Yeah, we can work with this. We can work with this. All right, so let's create a page. And I'm going to add a new... You Really? Thank you. Um, and I'm going to call this... Um, I'll call this single clip. And let's just call it... I don't want to call it clip.razor. I'll call it single clip. I'll call the file name that. And uh, I'm going to have this be a page, and I'm going to listen on slash clip. Actually, I want to listen on slash clip slash slug, right? Um, so, right, for routing purposes, can I do that? Right, is that how you do that? Um, don't mind me. Um, I forget how to do that. But, um, and I probably want to have in h2 at the top that'll be the title for this start with the, par the parameter coming in right um, that's going to be a string and it'll be the slug right that block of text that twitch assigns to a channel hey eagle good to see you um, I'm going to want an override initial a Right, uh, protected override, override on initialize. I'm I w want to make sure this is there. We go the async version. So, this is going to be async task. I forgot those. Um, <laughs> uh, base on initialized async, do that, and I'm going to want now. Um, Eagle had suggested suggested that uh, we we inject services for going and fetching and interacting with the data. Um, I'm gonna jump on that. Start. I'm gonna jump on using that architecture now, um, just because it's gonna give me that that separation that I want. So I think I want to put the interface down here with all the models that I'm that I'm returning because this is shared between the various locations. Um, and that means if I create another interface later, I'll have the same service shared in those other places. So uh, I'm going to add a folder here. Really? Because I have the debugger running, you're not, you're not going to let me... You're not going to let me rename that? Alright, I'll show you. Um, uh, I want... There. That That's a terrible experience. Right? It's better. Um, uh, move new folder to services. Right, does that work? Better. Alright. Am I using blazer size to get the size of the page to change to the size of the player? No, I'm not. 
Um, is that something something we should check out? What do we got? JavaScript interop, interop library that uses used to detect a browser's current size, change in size, test media queries. Hmm. Um, that could help. That could definitely help. Um, let me take that as a as an issue because that'll definitely help with the mobile. The mobile implementation that I'm using right now, mm, um, but let me um, improve uh, browser size detection and responsiveness for mobile. Um, consider using, and there's the link. I'm gonna mark this as a bug because it, it's something that needs to be done. And let's get that done this month. So, you like the race three? Yeah, I like it too. But you don't like the arrow keys? I. So I also have a poker, um, but I miss the arrow keys, and I don't like how I have to use function keys to get into them because of how I navigate around uh, code so much. Um. Walter has a question here about upgrading. Let me just pause for a second before I get back to the code. Bring up Walter's question. If I'm writing, working with a .NET Core 2.1 project, do I need to upgrade to 2.2.3, 3.1, and then finally 5? I have not done any upgrade webcasts. You should be able to upgrade directly to 5. Um, you will see with um, ASP.NET Core, the format of the startup class in the uh, configure method has changed. The the how routing is configured, the methods that are called for that has changed. There are um, analyzers when you install uh, when you set up ASP.NET Core that will help you with that. There's also a change on the SDK on the uh, on the top of the project file, the SDK that's referenced. That name has changed, um, but other than that, it it should just work for you. The rest, the rest of MVC, um, Razor, those all, no significant changes there. It's really more in the framework of how the uh, the website started. So it's it's really program CS, startup CS are the two, and the CS proj are the places where you're going to see changes. Shouldn't be too bad to do, but that's not a bad idea to record a webcast showing upgrading from 2.1 because 2.1 is is out. Um, so yeah, there are some upgrade guides, but they're right. I think we're we're at a point where you need to skip. You don't want to go 2.1 to 2.2 to 3 to 3.1. You want to skip right to 5. If you're going to get current, get all the way current. So what are those steps to kind of right, consolidate, aggregate those recommendations so that you get directly there. So, um, all right. So I feel like if, right, if you click into the comments, we should open up that single view. And if we're opening up the single view, I think we should start playing immediately. I think then we should kick that off. Um, let me see here. Where did I go? Over here. Um, what's this? Folder include? Nope. That's going to be... See, look at that. Now it doesn't know that it's here. I think it knows what this hat is. Oh, it didn't... It didn't take the picture. Uh, stream, there it is. Where'd it go? Try that again. Hmm. 
There, I took the picture. Now we know. And knowing is half the It's battle. my Ford hat. It's a Ford Mustang hat. Um, I don't. I guess I have to stop this. Rats, rats, rats. Not a fan of that. No, you go away. Right, but it should see. There it is. Services, including projects. So, right. I'm gonna add a. It's not a class, but um, right. I uh read. I read. I clip service. Let's call it. Right. And let's make this a public interface. I feel like I should put the actual implementations, though, in the Blazor app. Because that's where the injection is happening. So. Um, give me one second there, one lion. Let me come back to your question. Um, so... I'm going to want a method here that's going to return a... Close that. Close that. Um, I want. What's clip client? What is that? It's not even. Where is this referenced? That's the only place it's referenced. I don't know what this is. All right, maybe we keep this here and just have it wired up so it does the thing. Hmm. No, get rid of this. Move the implementation over to the other one. But um, here, models, there's the clip, right? This is the information that I want to return. So this, if I want, I'm just going to define, write a single method here, um, um, get clip by slug string slug. That should return very, very quickly. Um, right, why am I seeing these folders go away? Um, so here in the, Client, right? This is my Blazor app. Du, 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 du. Um, I want to add. I want to add a services folder here. Actually, I feel like I feel like I'm starting to create too many folders, right? Because I'm going to create a services folder here that has only one item in it, right? Um, Clips, service, and implement I. Clip service, give me that. Autocomplete, yes. Implement that, thank you. And we're gonna want a constructor that takes in an I HTTP client. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, not generate type. Is it just HTTP client that I want? I guess so. Because this is being used by Blazor. There aren't multiple implementations of that. Hey, get off my lawn? What is this? What? What is... Hey, get off my lawn? It's the old old dudes developers. Um, sound bites like this. I used to code with a chisel and a stone tablet. See? That's what he used to do. Um, so, this should be pretty easy to do. Uh, do, 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 do. So, uh, stash that, right? Uh, create that, put it into a field, thank you. And to actually go get that clip is going to be reaching into clip function, which is... Right, this is an Azure function, and I'm going to want to be able to go get a specific clip, right? Which I 
don't have a function that will get one clip and return it. So I've, I'm, I've defined the facade for the blazer side. Now let me define the server piece for this. Before I do this, I'm going to take one lion's question here. Let me put this up here. Um, going through the archives, but I haven't found an example you're looking for. Done anything with camera access in a previous stream? Componentizing a... What do you mean by a camera view? Um, working with camera from a web browser? Is that what you're looking for? Uh, give me a little bit more context here, one line. And we'll we'll get into this. There's, there's a handful of clips behind that. Access... Oh, okay. Accessing the camera from the web page. I did do something with that. I did do something with that. Um, you're looking for your, to, to have your phone open the camera. It's like a file open um, button. Um, take a look at that. Right, it, it's it's like the input top. It's like input type file, and there's a way to get that to trigger the camera. I don't, I don't remember doing that on stream, but I remember that demo. I remember, and it, it didn't show the camera, the camera view somewhere else. My friend Brady Gaster did something with that, being able to show webcam on. Um, on screen on a web page using signal R and streaming he did a thing with that I I had not web RTC with blazer um eh, not quite not quite when I think yeah so let me all right um do, do, do. let me create this method um so public async task uh, yes I'm gonna return an eye action result because it's gonna be a it's gonna contain that clip um, and let's call this um, let's call this get clip heck why don't we call it get clip by slug so it's got the exact same name as the service that calls it gosh and we could do get clip by slug so that it's it's naming's hard when you have a good name, stick with it. Uh, HTTP trigger, um, authorization level, a nani moose, a nani moose. Uh, sure, get on that, route equals, I could put it on the route, but I forget what that syntax looks like. And it would, it would load a parameter for me automatically, wouldn't it? How do we do that? Let's take a look at the documentation for the HTTP trigger. Um, I'm going to go over here, HTTP, um, this is Azure function, HTTP, trigger, route, I, the, the syntax should help me here, because I should, yeah, there we go, Smab's got, got the syntax for you, file, accept, image, capture, yeah, there you go, I knew there was a way to do it, and I had done it at one point, but I, I, I like I said, I just couldn't remember it. Uh, here we go. Use route parameters. Uh, route products slash ID. Um, then we can use the ID parameter. Well, uh, well, that's annoying. Uh, no. Crows! Crows 4K just resubscribed for 27 months. Thank you so much. 27 months with us, and we'll make another donation to Girls Who Code. Hey there, Black Eye. Good to see you. Um, there's a way to... Do, what's the syntax? Uh, put me into C-sharp land here. Um... Yeah. Show me that. And and I've gone too far. I've gone off the deep end. Method signature parameters. 
Stop. Stop. Stupid. No. Put me over here. Uh, trigger. But see, I'm I'm not in C sharp land. Right now, it's like I want to know how to use that. Right. And and that is terrible documentation around that. Um, <clears throat> the uh, using using route parameters section needs uh, some sample code. I guess we're just gonna figure this out. That's just annoying. Um, like, Azure function uh, HTTP trigger route parameter C sharp. It, that's not a spell example, but. Um, Azure developer tutorial. Passing parameter to, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. I can stack overflow with the best of them. Um, do, 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 do. Route equals, that's what I'm looking for. Um, okay. And I, I like the constraints on that also. So, what do we got here? Yeah, you need to allocate these things over here that you're capturing as parameters coming in. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so let's go back over to this. Um, route equals, right, uh, get clip by slug, right? Um, and I want to make this uh, slug, and I'm going to make that alpha. Right? I, I thought there's also a way to make that required. No matter. Um, <laughs> end quote. And uh, I'm going to call that uh, my request. Oh, it's a HTTP request. There we go. Um, and string slug, I'm going to want a logger. Thank you. All right. This should be the easy part. Um, what doesn't this like? Right. Um, so what I should be able to do is I should be able to go repository. I don't want to get clips. I want to get a single clip. So maybe we end up with a get clip by slug method over here. And I want to pass that in. And um, I should wrap this with some error handling, but I'm going to um, just return OK. Thank you. Uh, clip. So I need this method. Let's go create that method. Um, oh, no, new, thank you. So there it is. I want this to return a task of type uh, clip. Don't mind if I do. Um, which also means over here, I can put a big ol' await on that thing. And I need to now go into my services over here. I just updated that. This one, all the clips repository. This is now gonna... Wait a sec. That is an I Azure. yeah. Yup. This should be, there it is. I was gonna say, this should be grouchy and say, you didn't do this thing yet. There we go. Um. So, 
This time, I think I also want to return the full comment list when I fetch that clip. But there could be tens of thousands of comments. So maybe I make that a second fetch. Hmm. Yeah, let's make it a second fetch. Okay. So getting a single clip, I do need to get the count of comments, but that's going to actually be on the one clip when we after we finish this code. So right now, what I should be able to do is um, this clip equals what is it? Clips repository. Yep, get by row key because the row key is the slug. The partition key, Azure Table Storage, has two keys on every record. Partition key and a row key. The partition key, in this case, is the ID, the, the Twitch, typically numeric ID, for the user whose channel that belongs to. This way, we can, we can filter down very quickly to just the folks that you follow and see their, their clips. Um, and the row keys are the individual slugs. They're the truly unique, globally unique identifiers. So, um, that's easy, right? I would have thought I needed to, uh, needed to await that. Gosh. Um, I could just return that directly. No, I need to, um, well, I don't need to do that. Don't need. I need to figure out if it's liked by me. Well, I could. I need to know who you are in order to do that. Hmm. I think. Um, oh, that looks like a cool article, Smap. Thank you for sharing. You think it's automatically required for the routes since it's part of the expected path? Um, I think you're right. I actually paid for WinRAR. You got me to say your name. All right? Well done. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a thing. So, let me think. Um, I would need to pass in who you are. Um, maybe that's a secondary fetch because then I know right because if you click this link to go view this clip somewhere else I want to bring you directly into that page I want to to bring you directly in and you I don't know if you're logged in I don't know if you're not then go fetch some of that information to paint the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Do that secondary. Kasukin with the host! No, that's a raid. Welcome in, raiders! Hello, hello. How's it going there, my friend? Kasukin's another member of the Live Coders team. I have a feeling we'll see him pop in here. Hello! Uh, is that Velkas85? Hello? Yeah, there is a defend command, BB. We need a better defend command. I, I, I need to take a, a stream or two here and and work on some of that stuff. Hello, hello. Welcome in, Raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz. We're working on a Blazor static web app that's going to make Twitch clips more discoverable. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome in, Raiders. Um, and I'm, I'm working on my Azure functions here right now so that I can hook up a user interface for the comment system. What are we doing over there on your channel, Kasukin? Let us know. Can we get a shout out for Kasukin while we're here? Um, hey, ciao there, Emerlin77, good to see you. Diablo, triple X83, hello. Welcome in, thank you so much. Raiders, I really appreciate you joining us. Thanks, Mab, appreciate the shout out there. Hey, Coded Beard, good afternoon to you. Welcome in, Raiders. Um, yeah, my name is Jeff Fritz, and I'm sorry I don't speak Italian. I am I know Kasukin uh, will stream in Italian. Um, sometimes Italian, sometimes English. And uh, it's so good to see you, Raiders. Thank you so much for joining us. 
Um, is that I, I Gordamiani? Welcome in. I Gordamiani. Very cool. Thank you so much for joining us, friends. Um, so I'm getting <clears throat> records about clips that I have stored in Azure Table Storage and returning them here. I think I can just return this directly. I don't need to... That's not how you spell return. I don't need to go through anything special. Um, let me just make this a task um, from result on this. Um, just because I would... This, I feel like, should be a... Um, I feel like this should be at some point awaited. Um, no, I am not sponsored by Azure. I work for those folks. The the yeah. Now, why isn't this? Oh, it's returning a Twitch clip. No, I need to convert that to a clip. There we go. Much better. Um, moving on then. So over here. That was too easy to write. So, get clip by slug. This should be... Uh, right? And and I probably want to make this... This I want to make in a wait. Because I know it's going across. Um, it's going across the web. So, let me make this a task. So... Hey, good morning, Art for the Apocalypse. Yeah, I, I actually work for I work for Microsoft, so I'm not so much sponsored by Azure. I work for Azure, so um, right. So now let me make this a task, so we can make this run asynchronously. Right, um, there we go. So I can say var clip e uh, equals await um, client. Uh, see. Mm. Was it get as JSON async? Right, clip. Come here. Give me that. Give me that. Not it's not put as JSON. Where is it? Get as JSON. There's a there's a syntax for this that I'm missing. Um that we have for us in Blazor. Come here, where'd it go? Get from JSON async. That's what I want. Right? And let me get that. There it is. My using statement appropriately in there. And the, the location that I'm going to. Um, um, let me come to that question in. Yeah, that's right, Dr. Gamester. I do have my complaints. Um, let me. Azure typically has problems here on my stream. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So over here, right? Not the repository. We got the repository, I think, working properly in my function. Um, I want to go to get clip by slug slash and the name of the slug. Um, so I'm going to do that with a little string interpolation here. Uh, what don't you like there? I just added the thing. Using system net HTTP JSON. Right? Um, and what I really could do here is just jump right into doing it as a return. That's done. That's easy. Um, uh, is that Dinar Delian? Question on naming. Wouldn't it be better to add async at the end of the methods that return a task? <sighs> I've I've seen this question. I've seen this discussion. If I were to implement both async and sync versions of methods, yes, I agree with you. But I'm not taking those steps. This is for the, I'm not building a framework where I want to make those choices available for you. It's Dan. Okay, there we go. So, uh, Dan, much appreciated. Thank you for the correction. Um, and I'll remember that going forward. If I, if I was building a framework and I wanted to provide both 
both these synchronous and asynchronous interactions with the service. I agree with you. I only want to provide asynchronous. I want to make sure that everything is asynchronous. So I'm going to, I'm not going to pursue that naming convention. So it's a, it's a fine question. And I would recommend that if you were building a framework, building an application, building a set of services that did expose both synchronous and asynchronous, but I'm not, I'm just trying to get it delivered. Um, why would I put async on? You have to in order to be able to await these. I mean, if if I got rid of that and I returned this, just bubbled it up, I mean, I can do that also. And inside here, right? I'm awaiting it there. That's fine. So, um, so that should get my clip and I my my clip information that I want to put on this um single view screen and i want to emit here so now right i should be um i should be able to inject uh services i clip service and uh I i'm just gonna call this service um and this should be coming out of clip talk tot twitch right give me that give me that thank you i also need to configure that injection over here uh, this way i can change that signature later uh not um, I uh, clips service and it's going to go to services clip service uh, yes there we go good so now I've got that mapping set up so now I can I can paint right what this thing is um, and I can actually return private uh, clip yep um, clip right so uh, let's get that clip um, clip equals I'm going to await get the clip um, service get clip by slug and I should be able to grab by passing uh, that right right I forgot what do you mean you can't uh, that needs to be not components clip needs to be models clip I've got too many things named clip it's all clippy <laughs> why don't you like this semi oh. my bad all right, um, so then this, let's do this. Let's wrap this with a big old if. Um, if uh, clip equals null, um, else, uh, clip dots, hey, thank you. I should also include some other information about whose channel it came from, let you click to follow them on their channel. Uh, we'll get there. Um, Twitch player. <clears throat> and the slug that we're going to emit is... Um, why you no do this? Ah, oh, come on. Fine. Oh... I see what it's doing. I see what it's doing. Right? Come on. Thank you. Um, where'd it go? Twitch clip slug. Really? Thank you. What else do I need to pass in here? Thumbnail URL? Sure. Um the clip 
Yep, there's the thumbnail. Um, I'm not sure. Whatever. This should be the clip. And it we'll need to figure out the um we'll figure out the uh what's it called? Social media um card in a minute here. Well, a little bit later. Huh? Add Clippy to the website. <laughs> uh Yes, invisible programmer. I'm. That's. Let's let's make sure we get that. Um, the meaning of the word slug. How we're using this. So, um, slug is is um, in in English, particularly Americans will use this. Slug in 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 weapons in in firearms. Is um is a fake bullet is right is a blank it, it right it, it it's just um, a loaded piece of metal right um, a, a a solid piece of metal um, that it stands in for a bullet and that's what a slug our slug here is it, it's a block of text nonsense nonsense text that stands in for a unique identifier. So that's where we're referring to this as a slug, the, that block of text. So if you were to click through on any, um, and it, it comes from the printing industry, say, so look, Fritz trying to explain something versus actually looking it up, right? Um, uh, dictionary slug, just jump right into it. Small round uh, bullet larger than buckshot. A shot of liquor, small metal disc for use in vending or gambling machine, used illegally, in printing a strip or type of, of type metal, used for spacing. So, but yeah, look at that. I came right into this one. So it is, yeah, P mash. It is like a, it is like a good. So, uh, where was I? Yeah, I, I've broken the website for just a little bit. Well, I had broken it. It should be running fine now. No matter. Um, <laughs> that should... Now, I'm willing to bet I have this syntax wrong. And that it shouldn't be square brackets. It should be... Curly braces. I'm willing to bet that I had that wrong. You clip the clip, clipping clip. I, that is so meta. <laughs> um, oh, that built. Okay. So let's do this. Back over to the website. See, that should have reloaded. I'm gonna have to hard refresh. And... Ooh, that's not good. Oh, the service isn't running. We need to get the service running so we can work with that. Um, start that. Lob it out there in the background. Why is that taking so long to build? What are you? What are you doing? Pin that over there. And takes us good old time. Um, yeah, there we go. Hard refresh. Get me some data. There we go. All right. So the URL that our new page is listed on is slash clip slash slug. So this one here, right? I should be able to see that slug when I click to play one of these. 
Okay. Um, oh, here comes Twitch running all the nonsense in the background here. Look at this. Look at this! Excuse me. Um, see, they kind of hide that, don't they? Wise antsy vampire floof. You can't make this up. So if I try now to go to slash clip, wise antsy vampire floof. I'm getting a 404. Slash clip. Do I get rid of the slash up front there? Yeah, it must begin with that. That's what I thought. Let me look up the page directive. No. Um, blazer page directive. Right? How I capture that route parameter. No. Here. Route templates at page, right, to be able to pull different routes, you can specify multiples. Route parameters, there we go. Right, and that should drop into here. So that should, yeah, drop into there. Slash clip slash slug. So localhost 5000 slash clip slash wise antsy vampire floof. And it's not going there. XHR on that 404 not found. Oh, no, no, that's the, that's, that's my service. That's my service blowing up. Oh my gosh. Ow, oh, I didn't want to stop. Darn it. Let me restart the backend service. The backend service is okay. It was, so I'm gonna leave that pinned here, right? It's the Blazor service right here. This needs to go to slash API get clipped by slug. So I need to let that rebuild and it's, because I have the .NET watch running, it's gonna rebuild, redeploy right there. And it's already reloading for me. Got it. All right. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. It's not formatted very well here, but we're somewhere. What happened? Yeah, hey Chris, yeah, we are back into Clip Talk, absolutely. Um, okay. So, my HTTP client is already configured with the question mark. Um, so that's, that's something we can kind of, no, it's, it's already not, to, it, it's already configured with the port configured and then, and injected. I don't need to go and reconfigure that, but yeah, look at this. It, I, the I've resizing stuff that I've built, clip talk. there it is. It's, I, I do want to take up. On this screen, I want to take up half the screen. Comments on the other side. But, right, I'm not detecting size properly with this. So, you close here. Yeah, look, player width, player height. Um, I think I want to, I think I want to force the width to be 100%. Yeah. So if I go back over here, 
Let's put some carriage returns in this so we can see these. Right, so if I say... Well, it's a cascading parameter. Alright, fine. Uh, cascading value? Uh, name equals width. Value equals... Um, I'm going to force it to full size. Oh, darn it. There we go. And let that... Why is it doing that? File change detected. Waiting to rebuild, redeploy. Yes! Because I want it to take up the full, full size. There it is. I see it getting it. So it is full size. It replaced it. I've just announced this. There it is. So it's not showing the thumbnail. That's a problem. It's right. Refresh that. Um, and I want to set it up with the grid view so that on the right side, and, and then it'll fold underneath automatically when this is on mobile. On the right side, we'll put the comments, right? But we're not seeing the thumbnail here. Why not? Image alt. So it didn't pass the thumbnail URL. Why not? Um, let's go find that. There it went and got the data. File name, address. Wait a sec. Yeah, okay. Response. Um, it didn't bring back any views. That was something we were mashing up on on client side. So I still need I need to build that piece into my service. Comment count, uh, we'll figure that out. Why is thumbnail URL no? Right? I thought I had thumbnail URL inside my service already. Let's go check that out. Here. No. Do, 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 do. Clip repository. So it goes and gets the data, returns it. Um, get clips. Okay. Get all for partition to clip. And my to clip method here, oh, it doesn't have the URL. So where am I getting the thumbnail URL? Where am I getting the thumbnail URL? No, am I loading that over here? House Bisouch! Bisouch. H0, you spiss no, that's just wrong. Resubscribed for 21 months. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it, and we're going to make another donation to Girls Who Code. Um, await, load all clips, load all clips, get from JSON, get clips for this user ID. So... Aggregate likes. Where is it actually doing? I'm not worried about that. We haven't done the add comment. Add a clip to the repository. Yep, that's out there. We, we're going to need to handle that. Put some, some significant uh, protection around that. Um, where, where is it? Clips repository, get all. <clears throat> right, and, and my two clip method doesn't bring over the URL. And this returns, get clips returns back into here. 
get clips right there. Get clip views, and, and here's where it does the mashup. Twitch clips slug to array, reaches out to Twitch and gets the clip data. And there, it grabs the thumbnail. That thumbnail should probably be sitting inside of our, in, in our table repository, so that we don't need to call and, and, and hammer Twitch every time we present that, right? That's, that and the view count here, I would want to minimize those so we limit so that we limit the interactions but there it is I, so I can right I can mash into this yeah so my uh, um, so let's do this do, 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 do. Um, get clip views. What? Clip. Right? And I want to return uh, the first of those. Right? Because get clip views. Uh, like that. We're going to need to wrap it like this. That's... That's perfectly easy to read. Yeah, it's still running. Um, so let's stop and restart that. And then I'll be able to, I'll be able to just refresh my browser and I should get the, the things on it. Yeah, Twitch getting hammered, right? Well, I don't want to, right? I don't want to break my API keys. I, I don't want them to to flag me, right, and prevent me from interacting with the API. So, it's a piece of data that I can easily store, and I probably should. So now, there it is. Now I've got the the video loaded properly. I've just there announced we go. this. Good. Um, and over here, so what I'll do is I'll set up a grid, <coughs> a CSS grid, and over here is where I'll lay out the comments. And and I'll let the comments scroll and leave this fixed over here. I think that'll work. Right? Um, um, there's a question here. Uh, I'm not sure how to print it quite how to pronounce your name. Pexy Peton. I'm not sure about that. Uh, let me know. Um, the, does the camel case JSON require some black magic? When you configure the serializer to interact with JSON, there's an option in there for um, for how to use um, how to serialize the JSON. So um, I'm using the system text uh, JSON serializer. And uh, here we go. There are options that you can pass in here. Um, to formatted JSON, here you go. Write indented. There's other options in the JSON serial or JSON serialization options uh, object here that you can use to specify how you want it formatted and you pass into that serialize or deserialize uh, method appropriately that collection of options and um, it'll it'll set the the casing appropriately right so um, allow trailing commas um, ignore null fields ignore read only fields number handling uh, here we go property name case sensitivity property naming policy and I believe in here is where, um, there you go. Can be set to camel case to specify a camel casing policy. There you go. So, um, but there's a whole article here on how to serialize and deserialize. This is using um, the system, um, right? System text JSON 
formatter. Let me share that link so you can click through and get to that. We're not there on QA yet. We're, we're, we're getting there. We're, we're getting there, right? We're going to allow comments here. And we'll, we're getting. Um, but I, I definitely think the thumbnail URL we should consider loading into our into our tables. Um, I'm going to add that as a bug and put that as something for us to get done. Um, add a thumbnail URL to our uh, clips table. Um, we should not have to retrieve this every time from Twitch. That way we can minimize the number of interactions, right? Um, and maybe we want to also uh, minimize um, the number of times maybe we also want to minimize the number of times we go to get the number of views and, right maybe we have some off cycle process that goes and gets those like once an hour or something I don't know so hey BB hello hello so let me set up to put comments here yeah Um, and then we'll be able to take, right, I don't like how that takes so long to load. We'll be able to put, right, so you can click here and it goes right through to the video. I don't think, maybe, maybe we make the title clickable also. So the title and this both take you through to that page and the, the share links the slug page. Yeah. Yeah. View watchers will the view the view count will want more often than once an hour. For the number of clips that we're going to be updating, we're gonna we're gonna need to be smart about how we request the view count update if we're gonna cache that locally. Um, detect which clips we displayed, put them into a queue, and have that queue reviewed every ten minutes, half hour. And for those clips that are viewed, and, and right, we can dedupe then, but for those clips that are viewed, go refresh the number of views and we can fetch the list of clips. I think there's a maximum limit of a thousand we can request at a time. So batch up a thousand, up to a thousand of them, go make that request and, and drop into another queue, update these records so that it's all happening asynchronously behind the scenes, batching up, reducing duplicates, so we we why I'm being cautious is we need to manage the how we interact with the Twitch API. And at some point I may need to request um an, an extension there. So Oh, people who are concerned about their own views. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So but maybe when you click into a specific clip we can go get it directly because it actually shows you I don't know maybe so there's some fun clips here just in the default test data that I loaded any recommendations for beginner C sharp books I don't recommend books anymore for for beginner stuff because languages features of frameworks change too quickly um, I ran an entire series over on um, over on the Visual Studio channel that included Jupyter Notebooks with interactive samples that you can run through. You can find that over on youtube.com uh, slash dot net and look for the C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz um, playlist. And there, there's actually, in if you look just below me here, there's a link to my GitHub repositories. Look for the C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz repository. Click into that one. There's, there's notebooks in there. There's samples that'll get you started interactively. And they're being updated as we add and work on new things here. So... I think you're thinking of not 1984. You're also thinking of Fahrenheit 451. 
Um, where was I? Uh, yeah, I, I would like some way to click through to these. These clicks to go through to the Twitch channel of these folks. Maybe I add buttons over here that are things like follow and and visit channel or something like that. Um, there's definitely something we can reformat for each one of these to improve. But for minimum viable, I don't. I'm, I'm not going to get wrapped up in that right now. Um. So where was I? Um, I should link over to that. All right, let me change the, the clip format. Right here. Um, here. The title. Let's put this on a new line so it's easier to read. Um, um, href equals and I'm going to send you to um, slash clip slash and then I want to I want to drop in the uh, clip data dot come on come on no slash little a is it there it is, Twitch Clip Slug. So, and I also want to do that down here for the comments. Did I inject? I did inject Navigation Manager. So, I could put on click here and have it navigate you. <clears throat> sure, let's do that. Um, at on click equals um, go, uh, let's call it go to clip. I'm gonna change I'm gonna hard code this for right now. Um, <clears throat> public async task uh, go to clip. It's not even I don't even need those because I'm navigating you. It's like be gone. Um Nav, navigate to <clears throat> slash clip slash and it's going to be a clip data dot yep twitch clip slug done wait for the reload wait for the reload da -da -da -da. there it goes you prefer to just read text yeah that I, I really spend a lot of time writing that content. So there you go. That'll click through. Fantastic. And I can go back. Uh, maybe I need a click to go back to the home page. But. Hey, Fairy's video. No, was that at the top? Yeah, it was. Right. Um, you need just one hat. Here you go. Mint in box. Have you seen this one? There's, there's all kinds of, gosh, we brought it's all kinds sealed. of little... It's still yeah, sealed. The seal Look at that. There's four stream, five streamers now around that table. Santos streams the Orlando.net user group. Uh, that's Fanny Rinders. He, he streams I'm, He streams on YouTube and Twitch. Um, uh, Ellie Face, uh, she streams regularly weeknights. And uh, Chef Brent, he streams regularly during the day and with it, uh, his friends over there on Twilio. But I need to get the comments block now loaded over here. So I want a little bit of CSS grid. And I'm just going to divide it into two halves, I think. Right? Each one is the same. Uh, that way it wraps nicely when it gets to be too big. Um, and um, I'll put a header at the top. Comments. And I'll have the comments below it. Scroll. Easy enough. So... Um, Robert has a has a question here. Let me put this up before I go and start building the comments UI over here. Can I use Blazor components to make a static page more interactive, or is it only for spa? Oh, you can absolutely make it more interactive. Sure, sure. Um, 
right? I'm doing a single page application interface here. I mean, right, I'm trying to do this so that it's very small and there's zero impact on my server so that I've optimized it to the nines, right? I've really got it optimized so you have a great experience and I've put the load for network everywhere else except for on my service. So um, you can absolutely do that. It runs on top of static HTML. So if you wanted to put a Blazor component on top of static HTML to go and fetch data, and that's what this is. Make no bones about it. Um, if you look at how this is hosted, it's on top of a static HTML page. So, right, if you want to have some interactive content on a static HTML page, you can do that. Absolutely, Robert. So, just like Vue or Angular or any of those other JavaScript frameworks, frameworks you can do that with Blazor and WebAssembly as well. Okay, so on my, I don't need any of these repository classes for right now. We can come back to those later. Um, gosh, I feel like I should make this class. Let's let's put a class on this. Um, let's call this uh, comments comments button. No, comments label. Right. Co no, comment count label. Damn, but gotta be real descriptive about what this thing is doing. You know what I'm saying? Right? Get rid of that. I realize I just replaced a style with a class that's longer than the style that I'm replacing. That'll change. Well, as we add more configuration to this, that'll change. Um, and it was um, cursor pointer, right? go away um, so now for the layout of the single clip page right um, so I think right we're gonna have some main content too far too far okay um, the player right something like that rats why didn't you answer answer um and we'll call this uh comment block right um and i want to have i want to have my h3 at the top that says comments and we'll format that appropriately and um, right I'm going to I'm going to want to go get the comments um, I eh. um, models dots I don't have a comments object here That's going to be something we need to build, I guess. Comments. That's... Yep. And this will be a Poco. And I do have an object that I use on the API that I store. There, clip comments. It has a slug, it has an ID. The commenter's Twitch ID, the commenter's Twitch display name, the parent comment. You know what this doesn't have? The actual content. need to actually put that in there um hey bsd content uh bsd guy good to see you practical dk just finished your first program congratulations uh what what did you write your program in 
Python to-do list using rich and tiny db. Nice. Um, yes, links are allowed in chat. Sure. You're welcome to share that. Congratulations to you. Big celebration there. There you go. Always want to encourage, I, I always want to encourage learning and growth and folks figuring out um, and, and advancing their technical knowledge. So big congratulations to you. You know what? I'm just realizing I can mark number two as complete there on my to-do list. So I'm going to mark that one is done. And uh, I am still working on number one there above it, adding the UI. So I have the content here. I need to actually have that in over here. And I need, um, I, I do need some of these other fields, which is going to be kind of weird to have them in both places. But no matter. The comment ID, well, I don't care what that is. I don't care what right entity is. The commenters Twitch ID, yeah. The commenters Twitch display name, yeah. The parent comment ID so that we can do threading. And the content. You know what I'm thinking? Um, can I make these virtual? You know what I'm thinking? Stop all the things. Exactly. Swally. Oh. Spoiler alert. You are thinking two steps ahead of me. Swally has this right. Better to have it at one class and inherit from it. Yes. Yes. Since these both do pretty much the same thing. And I'm not... There's no concerns for me to hide behind the scenes. I'm going to go into my service class here and where I have this um oh I need to inherit from table entity I can't inherit from both yeah I'm not going to be able to inherit from both because you can only have single inheritance um Man, that would have been the way to do it. That would have been the way to do it. But I need to make this a table entity. Um, so let's... Yeah. Um... Public static. Uh, I'm going to return a. It's going to be models dots comment. Uh, yeah, to comment. Um, and it doesn't like that. Yep, twitch dot models. Um, and I'm going to be passing in a. Yeah. Um, return new one of those, and I got to do that that stupid left right. Which. I could use something like Auto Mapper to take care of this, but I have so few of these. Um, I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna go and set all that up. Um, so. Yeah, that works. Nope, no Auto Mapper. No, no. Um, 
All right, so now I have that. So what I, and this is now an object. So now I need to write that for loop that's going to go over and return just the comp, start with, right? It, 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 this is, it, uh, this is going to be the hierarchical, no. Um, it's going to call itself, right? Yeah, right? Um, this is a self-referencing component. Formatting a comment. Let's call this comment dis... No, no! Stop! Comment display. And... Um... I'm not even injecting anything. I'm going to pass in as a parameter um, a uh, models dot a single comment because I'm going to do a for each to display each of these and I'm also going to have as a cascading parameter all of the comments so that I can go get the ones that have a parent ID that reference this comment and output those. Right? So let's just make this just really simple here. What did I get over here? Cool. All right, we'll get back to that. Um, right. So, just for now, um, do I? Am I actually? There is a timestamp on this object, but it's not on this object. Uh, uh, timestamp. Let's call it timestamp UTC. Um, so that right because there is a timestamp. It's a date time offset. should be UTC. Um, so we'll be able to format that appropriately, right? Um, so I don't know why I just did that. Um, at um, uh, commenter Twitch display name wrote right and I'm we'll figure out this layout comment dot content no there that's right and then um, I should have done if I should have done it and then um, in and let's create a method here that, that'll return these. Uh, public models dot comment get child comments. Right, I in get child comments. Um, and I'm just going to output them as comment display. Um, comment equals item. So get child comments, what I want to do is I want to say um, return comments where 
Um, parent comment ID equals this comment ID. Order by, do we order by latest descending? Yeah, order by that descending. And I need a big old two array. Hey, Intergalactic J. Oh my goodness. Ten other folks in chat just got some some emotes. Congratulations. Thank you so much for that cheer, and we'll make another donation to Girls Who Code. Much appreciate. So, yep, you can call yourself right there. So, right, this way, if that where doesn't return any records, this four will come up with zero records. It'll still return an array. It'll be an empty array, and it won't output any data. So, there we go. Let me... Okay, so now I have a way to do comment display. Um, back over on... I don't need this one for right now. Don't need that for right now. I'm over here, right? So I just want to do a for each on the comments that don't have a parent comment ID. So, uh, and then we'll figure out how to lay those out. Uh, for each item in comments. That's fine. Um, no. Um, no, 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 no. Models dot comment uh, get yeah get root comments. In fact, that's mm, yeah. And I'm gonna have that cascading value on these. Right? That was um, comments. Uh, comments value equals those. So that's being passed along. The root comments are going to be comments where, and this will be just a, a sub a subset so it should run through this should run through this very very quickly where parent ID I want to do a string is null or empty on that um, order by descending so most recent is up at the top um, timestamp to array so Right? And now it becomes comment display, comment equals item. And now we should have comments. Um, Elliot, that's not a bad idea. What about using the virtualized component there instead of the for each? It's not a bad idea. Who da? Build up devs. Build up devs raided my stream with 15 viewers. Welcome in, build up devs. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for that raid. Hey there, Toe Frog. Lily Hazel is here. Hey, Lily. Good to see you. Hello, hello. Welcome in, raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz, and I'm working on a Blazor static web app that um, is going to make Twitch clips a little bit easier to socialize and, uh, and interact with for everybody who has content here on Twitch. Um, and we're actually going to take a look at what C4 is asking about right now. What is a virtualized component? We're going to look at virtualizing interaction and some data right here on screen. Um, and I'm, actually, that virtualize is going to be a little weird to do. Um, so, what are we working on over there on your channel, Build Up Devs? Can we get a shout out for Build Up Devs? And and uh, yeah, um, 
love to hear more about your channel and what was going on over there. So we, we can send some folks over to to check that out. So, had your first stream. Oh my goodness. And you had 15 people watching. That's great. So. Hey. Look at that. Robert Tables here. That is uh, Clarkio and Denisha's new stream. Oh, terrific. Oh, that's great. Why'd you create a new stream? No matter. Um, all right. Let's um, let's take a look at virtualizing. Look at that. That is a namespace and a half. No, I don't want that. Um, so this is Blazor. This is um, going to... It's Razor mixed with C Sharp, right? So it looks like HTML mixed with C Sharp. Uh, that gets compiled down and delivered as a as a binary that you can interact with inside the browser. And folks are using it more and more to build single page applications. This way we, right, we can deliver a binary that has all of our business logic in it and we can connect out to APIs, services. In my case, I'm using Azure Functions as my API back office services that will get, fetch, and interact with my data that I'm gonna present here, so. Because Clarkio really enjoys managing three different streams. That's right. The concern that, that I have when folks spin up different streams for different cons for different types of shows is you're forking your audience. Um, you're also you, you're confusing them a little too. So, uh, so. Um, okay, so the virtualized component that we're going to use here, this is a new component that was added with the latest version of Blazor that will only render the components that are on screen. This way, it'll scale It'll scale better for you. Um, so I think there's, isn't there like a context? I forget exactly how to use this. We started down this path in, in a previous stream and I kind of got lost. So, um, Blazor Virtualize. And let's grab what that component looks like and make sure we use this correctly. Hop in the cloud, you're watching my Entity Framework video? Well, I'm glad you're enjoying that. I hope you're enjoying that. <laughs> um, so I have context is whatever that is. There we go, items equals. So context equals, um, I'll call it item. Items equals, and there's ways to specify an item provider that's going to provide these and it um, let's just start with this because it it wasn't quite working properly for me um, last time but let's see if this works so yes that's that's a component I put it into right yeah, uh, let's see what happens here. I have it automatically rebuilding behind the scenes here. Markup code and block directives are not valid in component imports. What? 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 In imports over here. Oh, I forgot the using. Yeah, you're right, Elliot. There we go. Rebuild. Did they change the logo and layout of Bing recently? I don't think so. Did they? Of course, everybody should be using Bing. Yes, they did change the logo. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they did. And there's more logo changes coming there. So. Hey, John Calloway. And knowing and is half the battle. battle. It's my Ford hat. Um, all right, so let's... That should work. It is compiling now. Let me go back over to my... Here. Refresh that page. Expensive poor herbs, ritz, mitts. Yeah, that's that's search engine optimization of bubble. bubble. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. What happened? 
Um, same origin policy disallows... Oh, I didn't... I forgot to start the service. I forgot to start the service. So, let me get that loaded up. <laughs> loading, loading. While that's loading, Jay Roseguard has a question here. Uh, let me put that up. Um, notice I'm using Dependabot in, Dependabot in my repository. Uh, I use it in a bunch of repositories, but have I specified any Dependabot YAML? Or does it just work? Yeah, it just works out of the box. Dependabot YAML, you can tell it. I, I think it's different folders to look in and how to interact with those folders and whether it should up, upgrade or not and, and how it should upgrade. Um, so, um just out of the box it's just aggressive and tells you to upgrade everything it works just fine so uh no I, i'm i was joking about the seo name up here expensive poor herbs ritz mitts that's kind of ugly um but blazer seo you need to think of in the same way that we used to think of javascript seo for single page applications um the the search engines won't see your executable binary code yet they just won't um uh -oh. value cannot be null in get root comments all right we'll take a look at that you just let it stay with the default options yeah yeah there's ways to tune that hey is that uh Zhu lols Right, am I pronouncing that right? Zhu Lols 0608. Good to see you. Hello. I I'm looking at the um the English version of your handle there. Welcome. So um I'm yeah, I'm telling it to get the root comments, and I never told it to get comments to start with. So we're gonna do do I have anything to go I don't have anything to go get that yet, do I? Where was I here? Comments display get child. Um, here. Right. That. So, if there aren't any, so I'll put the question mark in there so it does the null check. File change detected, waiting for it to rebuild, refresh the screen, and I should get it painting, even though there are no comments. Nope. Well, it did paint, um, but it's still errored out here. Virtualize requires either the items or items provider parameters to be specified and not null. Um. So now it should return no matter what, and I'll do the CSS layout here in a bit, but I still need to go... Well, there we go. Now it renders properly. Um, so thinking, thinking here. Um, I think I want only want to put the add comments button on this page, so that we're. I know, and you're very focused on here, and I need to make sure that you're logged in then I can redirect you back to this page after you log in. Um, thinking, thinking, thinking. Let's... Do I write the get comments feature first? No, I don't have a way to add comments yet. Let's do the layout next. Let's do the layout. Let's, let's put those side by side. So I want to do a CSS, uh, CSS grid layout. Right, I'm gonna go grab one of these tools that lets me very quickly do a, a layout. Um, grid by example here, uh, right? Something like that. Defining a grid, I just want two side by side, right? I don't even want to think about this, just give it to me, right? CSS grid, layout, tool, something, a grid generator, yes. I'm not even going to look at your article. I'm just going to look for a CSS grid generator. There we go. Layout it grid. Thank you. Um, so grid columns. I just want two columns. 
Um, I just want one row. Grid container, there it is. And I've got two. I can give these names. Fancy. Um, I'm just gonna copy that and and boom goes the dynamite, right? Isn't that the way that goes? Bazinga. Eh, uh, kind of. Boom goes the dynamite. There it is. Um, let me go grab my CSS sheet. Um, single clip view and my CSS is just all over the place it's terrible um, single clip layout and I'll go back over here so I'll put it right there and I have two divs inside of it and it already should know yep grid template areas two of them so it should lay that out correctly for me. I'm going to do a hard refresh because I want to make sure I get the latest version of that CSS. No, I didn't give it a name. I don't need to give it a name, but you can give it a name. There we go. Now I'll put them side by side. Perfect. Next issue. Um, right? And if it if we go to a phone display, well, that's just that's not right. It still thinks it's side by side. Right. That should have wrapped. I would have thought that would have wrapped. Um, right, I have a mobile media query up here somewhere. There we go. Um, yeah. Right, then I'll do it like that. And I won't specify. Right. Uh, looking for the URL for the grid generator? Sure. There you go. Been needing to refresh after turning on mobile display. Um, so I turned on mobile display. I'll force a refresh here. This is attempting to emulate an iPhone 6. Oh no, that... Well, yeah. Right, because I added that down there, and it doesn't have that. So, it's stacked. I'm going to want to resize the video appropriately here. Um, and I have some logic for that. We'll come back to that. Um, get it working in desktop first, and we'll move on into some of the other things. Um, where was it? Single clip. Um, I want to put comments up at the top of this and have it anchored there. And look at that. I'm, these things, right? Where's where's main? You. That. I want them anchored to the top. Right? Why is there so much space above it? Right? Um, there's got to be something with with that layout. Right? Grid. And I don't want it to scroll. How do I get rid of the scroll? Hmm. Um, justify content, flex start. Yeah. Align items center. Well, that's on my main. Ah. Ah. Hmm. Should get rid of that. Right, and it's doing a thing with the height and the overflow Y. Right. I need to do this different. Yeah. Um, I don't want... Right, let's change this to a div. Right, and let it reload. That should push it to the top there we go that's better so now un under comments in the comment block right that h3 I want to um, 
I want that to always be at the top, like that. Because I'm going to set this to overflow and scroll. And I want comments to always be stuck at the top there. So. Um, right, and if this is a smaller browser, well, that's a problem. We'll have to figure out how to do the alignment there. Um, all right, but I want to start formatting the comments that output over here and get it to scroll. So I'm going to need an add comment button. I feel like add comment should be at the should be at the top and docked if you're adding a comment right on this. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Here. Right. Um, let's make it a text area. Ooh, make it an input text area. Um, and can I do a... I can't do a watermark there, can I? Gets or sets display name values used when generating error messages when the input value fails to parse correctly. Mm. Um, I'm going to bind this. And I'm going to create a property here. And maybe it should be just a field, right? Private string new comment content. Uh, let's allocate that string dot empty. There we go. Right. Isn't what other features can we light up on that? No, I don't. No, no. No. Input text area. You're going to make me search for this, aren't you? Um, blazer input text area. Let's see. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Input text. Radio buttons. I want input text area. That thing. What do we got? What do we got? Nice examples. Okay. Um, so I'm doing a bind to it. In all of the input compo components, including edit form, support arbitrary attributes. Is render is positioned on the rendered HTML. Okay. So um, if I want a text area watermark, what's the attribute for that? Placeholder. Um, enter new comment. Right? And this should be edit form, not just form. Right? Um, don't really have a model. And I'm probably going to want a button on the end of this. Um, what is it? Text? No. Um, at on click. There it is. Um, add comment. We're also going to want to activate these or deactivate them based on whether or not you're logged in. So we're going to need to do that. Um, comment. So I'll need that method. Um, uh, add comment. So I'm going to want to use Right, do something like service, add comment, um, new comment content, and whoever the user is. 
I need to get your user information. Uh, Twitch user, user. Um, no, let's tell the service. Just pass the user and let it figure out and place the data appropriately. Let that figure it out. I don't want to... How you doing there, Norchess? We're building a service here that makes Twitch clips more discoverable, more friendly for folks to socialize around called Clip Talk. Um, so let's see what that looks like. Even though I'm not done what it looks like, right? Like I'm not done all the features. I don't have it working. Look at that unhandled error. And I feel bad. Edit form requires either a model parameter or an edit context parameter. Uh, it does. It's only a model. Um, and you're not going to tell me about this. Edit context supplies the edit context explicitly. Well, what's that? I don't know what that means. It's an edit cont. I don't know what this means. Do not also supply model. Okay, what's well model? It's an object. You ever feel like a complete idiot? I mean, really. Uh, new comment? I don't know. I don't know. Private uh, models dot comment. New comment. Uh, hey, guess what I'm gonna make? It's a new comment. So this should then bind to. See. Mm. Mm. Now you're making me. Right? New comment dot content. Okay. Um, let's see how that works. Waiting for the rebuild. That tells me something errored here. iClip service does not contain a definition for add comment. Right, because I didn't write it yet. So I need to add that. It's not going to let me add that because I'm in debug mode. Uh, come on. I'd like for you to... Thanks, I'll go make it myself. Um, and I'm just gonna make that return a task. String, new comment. Um, Twitch user, user. Okay. So now my implementation here. This should be grouchy. Thank you. I'd like to move you lower. Thank you. Um, so now to add a comment. Um, I'm going to post. Really? It's 
Something like that. Um, and I need a... Uh, Content is going to be new form URL encoded content. Oh, love it. Uh, give me a dictionary of strings. Um, and we're going to pass. Um, well, I can't just pass the comment. I also need to pass the comment ID. I need to pass. Ooh, we got a couple things we got to pass here that I'm not handling. Um. We need to pass the comment slug of uh, uh, clip slug, right? Um, I also need to pass um, parent comment ID if there is one. That could be null. Um, yeah, I need those two. So let's add that back over here. Cool. Right, so now... Uh, where's the function? Where's the function? I feel like I should have a separate comment function for these. Um, no matter. I still, have, I still need to write a thing to go get these. Um, function name, add comment, uh, public a async task, i action result, add comment, okay, uh, HTTP trigger, authorization level anonymous, post, there is no route. And, uh, oops. There we go. And give me a logger. Even though we can't see the logger anyway because we're using Azure Static web apps. And they don't support logging yet. Curly bracket is out of place just above it. I think I fixed it. Did I fix it? Yeah, I think I fixed it. We're good. Um, in my service. Oh. Uh, no, no. These are going to be, right, something like um, Twitch clip slug, right? Uh, clip slug. Right? Oh, yeah, that one. You're right. I was closing it. Um, is that working? No. Yeah, post this JSON async. There we go. Request URI is going to be um, API add comment. The payload that we're posting is... Wait, I, th I think I just want post as async. Or just, yeah, post async. Yeah, uh, content. Cool. Um, sure, let's do these. Um, I could make this into an object, um, so it's a little bit, but the, this is effectively me creating a um, a view model. Uh, content is going to be the new comment. Um, Twitch user ID is going to be the user dot Twitch ID. Uh, Twitch display name user is it display name? Ah, oh, there it is. Um, you know what? I could make this a view model so I have the same object on both sides. Uh, 
Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Um... Let's do that. So we so it is effectively a view model. Um, and move you into a new file. Thank you. Why didn't you show me that file? String twitch clip slug. Um, string parent comment ID, string twitch user ID, twitch display name, that's the user's display name, um, content, I think that's all I needed. So I can get rid of this and say new models, new comment. Sure. Uh, fine. Who that? Jeff Blankenberg. Jeff Blankenberg raided my stream with 14 viewers. Oh my gosh. He is I'm trying to think trying to think of an alliteration here. Um he is your Alexa ambassador. He is your your Echo What's something educational that starts with E? Your Echo Emirate. How you doing there? Jeff Blankenberg. So good to see you. Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome in raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz and I'm writing a blazer static web up. There he is. Um, you love that? Yeah, the gunner glasses. These are the gunner lightning three six, lightning bolt three sixty. Um, and uh, yeah, they've been helping me with keeping my keep, keeping me without getting a headache late in the day after a long day of coding. Um, so we're building this blazer static web app that is going to make clips more discoverable. And something you can socialize on for Twitch. You've been the unit test learner. Nice. Nice. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> um, let me see here. Uh, and this is the clip slug. Uh, what were you doing over on your channel? Uh, let us know. Uh, I'm going to say user dot. There it is. Display name. And uh, this will be user Twitch ID. Now I should be able to say, um, right, post as JSON async and have it post that. And now I'll be able to receive that object and work with it. Lots of unit tests needed to make sure the Alexa Casino is working properly. Nice. Right? Oh, there we go. The Echo Educator. Thank you, BB. Yeah, he is your Echo Educator. Good call. Good call. So, if I'm doing this right, I should be able to receive um, models dot, right, new comment. If I've done this right, and I don't know, I, I might not have. That's fine. Right? Um, so if I do await, um, yep, add comment. There it is. Um, the user's Twitch ID, their user's Twitch ID, display name. Yeah, see, this, this method needs more here too. Um, You know what? I'm going to I'm going to change that signature. Add comment. Bah. Uh and I'll call it comment like that. So now I'll go back over to my here. There. 
Write new comment. Comment. It's throwing a not implemented exception because I'm not done it yet. But I should be able to just pass that along. Yeah. Right? And we'll put some sort of error handling around this. Uh, return new... Uh, that's not a spell return. No wonder it doesn't like me. New um, bad request object result. Yeah. I don't want to pass the... Um, Um, <laughs> message. Where's the message? Yeah. Um, that's not a valid comment. Okay. Return. Uh, okay result. New okay result. I always do that. The your Alexa analyzer. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, so now I have a way, and it, right over here in my repository, I'm going to want to inspect it. Um, you know what I should do is I should put a not null on this. All right, give me, nope. Is it, is it null? Is it nullable? equals false no um, right system component model what is it I want to say that it's not allowed to be null yeah bad result is an error yep um, component model null attribute something like that is it required? Yeah, there it is. That's the one I need. Right? Same thing for this. That is not required. That can be null. That is required. That is required. Cool. Um, so what I can do actually, right, is I can say, uh, model, <laughs> if, uh, model state dot is valid, right? Because this was, right? Right, isn't there a way to do model? Awesome Alexa alliteration amusement. Eh, that's not bad too. Um, I'm in the middle of number three here. Let me mark number three as what we're actively working on on the to-do list. And you know what? I'm not quite done number one, but I need to get the add function working, working, so that I can go back and. No, I didn't. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Active free. It doesn't need to be an MVC controller. There is a way to do model state from within Azure Functions. Because Azure Functions is built on top of ASP.NET Core. Um, model state dictionary class, Azure Functions with fluent validation. There's a way to do this. Here, Jerry Pelser has some information about this. Um, yeah, model state is valid, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's MVC. I need this in an... That's... Uh, this one, see how this goes. Yeah, there is a way to do it. Um, Create an extension which validates the object and sets an out parameter with the collection of errors. 
Um, validator dot try validate state. What? What's that? Try validate. Try validate object. Ooh. And I would want to validate a uh, new comment. What's the validation context? New validation context. Look at that. Null, null, null. Validation results. All right. So new validation context. What are my objects? Uh, okay. So it's going to be that object. Dictionary of items. Um, or service provider. Uh, nope. Nope. I don't have anything. What else? Validation results. Okay, so we need to receive those. Um, I see why this guy wrote it as an extension. Okay. Fine. Fine. Save my bacon here, friend. Um, I'll just create a new class. And st stash it out there somewhere. I don't care. If new comment dot is valid, right? And it returns validation results. Ah. Right, which should be like a model state class or something. Um, return new bad object. And it wants a model state dictionary. Right? Hmm, I've got this clipping. Um. <laughs> Can I say validation results dot? Well, those are validation results. I need to convert it to model state. Um, convert validation results to model state. It, I bet your model state is just a Right, it's just a collection. I'm really not liking that clipping on the music here. I'm going to change songs. Um, this is red. There we go. Right. What if I say new model state? That's weird that this wants model state, and model state isn't it isn't here. Model state dictionary. Oh. Why don't we know what that is? Um, yes, please. Max allowed errors, model st another model state dictionary. What do we have? Is there validation state, which is a model validation state? What's root? It's a model state entry. Uh, new, what's in a model state entry? Or not. Okay, what's in validation state? Ah, that's a, hmm. Uh, no. Where'd it go? No. Um, 
right? Stack, it was Stack Overflow, that one. Uh, out validation results, return new, bad object, bad request object results, and he's just doing a string join on the error message. Mm. All right. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that, just formatting and pushing that string. Right. Uh, return new bad request object result. And it's going to be. Eh. So I've got some validation now behind it. Add comment. I need to get this working, which is over here. So all this is going to do now that it's been validated. Right. Um, is I want to go, well, um, I need a, um, let's call this comment to, comment to write equals, right now this is, right, this is my actual comment that I'm outputting. So the clip slug that I'm attaching to is, that the commenter's Twitch display name is going to be Twitch display name. Their Twitch ID, comment, Twitch user ID. The comment ID, well, we're generating that, so we don't know what that is. Um, comment content, parent comment ID, um, comment, uh, parent comment ID. And I don't know what the timestamp is. So, where'd it go? Go back. Go back! You can actually search for methods here, and it'll take you right to it. There we go. Okay, so now I should be able to say comments repository Add or update, comment to write. Why you know like this? There should be a clip comments, rats. Which actually has the same content, right? Um, this, yep. So I should be able to return that so it gets awaited up the stack, right? Mm. I can use data annotations validator in the edit form. Yes. And and I also need it on the server so that if somebody tries to hammer the server directly, you're you're spot on. Now that I have a real view model, I do need to put that validator in there. Um this Um, I changed that. Right, because I now have new comp, that's, uh, I need the slug, the parent comment ID. I need to add the slug and the, the parent ID. Okay, so this I know is that if there is a parent comment ID, I don't have one yet here. So, I, I don't know what that is. Handle replying to a comment. I haven't even gotten threading running here, so let's get that working. Yeah, client validation, spot on one lion. That is something that I think developers need to completely understand. When you validate data on your client, that's for convenience, that's not for security. You still need to validate on your server. Very good point here, thank you. For, for pointing that out and reminding us. That's something that, that developers do need to be aware of. Um, where was it? Validation. I need to put a validator here. Uh, is it a validator? Something like that. Um, 
validation summary. Um, and what we're validating is uh, that, right? Yeah, we don't even let our microservices trust each other. You're right. Um, okay, let's restart the API. Oh, build errors. Uh, nope. What do we break? I'm missing a semi somewhere. Fantastic. And I should be having a bunch of unit tests around this. Um, I'm trying to go quick. I'm, tr I'm trying to, I'm really trying to do this as, as quick and dirty as possible. Bald bearded builder is here. Bang. How's it going there, my friend? It's good to see you. Um, little did you know that illegal he's... Illegal in nine countries. He's illegal in nine countries. Um, rats. Cannot bind parameter new comment to type new comment. Please make sure the parameter type is supported in the binding. Um... <laughs> So it won't bind to that type. Why not? Uh, uh, let's see here. Nope, wrong one. Um, this one. Um, Azure functions uh, C sharp model binding. There's a way to do this. There is a way to do this. Come on, find it. Yeah, this. How do I do model binding with HTTP trigger? How do I do that? Instead of using an HTTP request parameter, you can use a custom type. Ah. Fantastic. Yes, please give me that. Say. Oh my. I know. Right? Like, come on, man. Come on. No. Over here, mm, you go away. It's here on the clip function, all right? And I just realized I've dipped way down into radio voice. Who that? Steven, good to see you. Oh, you love Azure Functions? I'm, uh, I'm finding my way here. Definitely finding my way. Um, I'm gonna close this try and restart it and hope that it indexes and binds to that properly. So, start that. See if we can get this running. Get it binding properly, right? Here we go. Let's see, right, I wanna have it bind to that new comment object and that the post of that object gets parsed, serialized, deserialized and made available. There we go, now it's available. So I'm going to move this over here. Let's double check and make sure our Blazor, our Blazor UI is still working. Fantastic. So let's go over to here. Hard refresh on that since it aired out before. .NET Watch Reload connected. Good. And um, are are you kidding? Are you? Go ahead. You can take a look. Oh, I was finding it earlier. Um, why, why is this airing out here? Come on now. I expect you to die. Well, it did. Input text area requires a value for the value expression parameter. This is provided automatically when using bind value. What? Really? Really? 
really Is that going to reload? Ah, there it is. It is going to reload. <sighs> okay. Uh, this needs to be over here. Why is it in this box? block? If it's in the grid... Oh! I did put it in the wrong place. And now I feel shame. That should be here. Let's reload that. Ah, take care, Ultramark. Thanks so much for watching. There we go. So, right, we'll fix this layout. But, I mean, I should be able to get this to load appropriately here, right? Um, this was a, a fun uh, stream uh, at... Channel 9 Studios on Microsoft Campus. Okay. I'm getting a 400 bed request. What happened? What did you do? What did you do? And the funny thing is, I'm probably the one that wrote the bed request. Show me the response. Nothing. That's not a valid comment. Hey! Watson buckets? Watson buckets? I wasn't using uh, anything IBM here. Let's go back over to this. If I look at my function, right? That's not a valid, it was uh, an error during this. So I tell you what, I'm gonna put a breakpoint right there. Let's step into it. So new comment is valid. Let's take a look at it. It doesn't have any content. It doesn't have any content. Okay. Um, why doesn't it have any content? I could have left that running. I could have left that running. I could have been a contender. No. Um, set us a startup project. Go ahead and run that. I'm just going to park you over here. Because I need to look at that single page. Right? Bind value. It should have put that into the new comment content. Right? Oh, you passed the wrong object there, Fritz. This should be like that. This will reload. Yeah. Add form control for bootstrap full width. Ooh, good idea. Thank you, Caparino, for the suggestion. Let me pin that. Come back to that in just a second here. Uh, this was a fun session in Channel 9 Studios on Microsoft Campus. Go. Still got a 400. New, okay, new comment is invalid. All right, we're getting somewhere. Um, and it's not telling me what the message was. Well, that's annoying. Where'd it go? Clip function. I don't need this anymore. I don't need the interface. Um, I think that's good. Don't need you. I'm going to need that. Um, uh, don't need you, don't need you, don't need you. Okay. So it, sh it hit here. No. No, it aired out up here. Yep. Try that again. Alright, new comment has what? 
Doesn't have a parent comment ID. That's fine. But it, and it has my content. There is no parent comment, so... Right? New list validation results. Try validate object. It'll return... Oh, if it is valid. I have it backwards. Darn... If it's not valid. Try it again. Um, using on valid submit on the edit form with the comment button being type equals submit. Um, good idea. Uh, good idea. May, uh, it is not. It's just a button at this point. So... Go ahead and refresh. Uh, this... This is a test. I'm not going to go type that whole thing again. Dear Lord. Alright. There we go. Add that new comment. It's got all my stuff in it. And I still hit a 400. And it was an error saving, right? That's what that is. So let's hit it again. Not there. Step into this and let's take a look. See, um, that's a thing. That's a thing. That's a thing. That's a thing. That's not a thing. Okay. Adder update. Yeah. So, is it in I set keys? Nope. Get the cloud table, click comments, and. Oh. Yeah. So, now I have a cloud table. Insert or replace that object. It has a partition key, it doesn't, oh, it doesn't have the row key yet. Well, the row key, this is where I set keys came in, right? This should have a timestamp. No, it doesn't have a valid timestamp yet. Okay. All right, so let's fix this, right? I put in this concept, I thought I had it right here with when we serialize the entity, go and generate the row key, and can't do that. So I I I hacked it, and I wrote a method here called I set key so that when we go to actually commit the record, I go through this standard interface of add update, and oh, you need to go set the keys. So only when we're adding should we set the keys yeah i'm using azure table storage yep 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 um is timestamp can i write to that is it a, it is a get set so let's let's take this and just drop it right there row key equals if we don't have a row key um get now and jam the commenter's Twitch ID onto it. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I can get rid of this. And now Right, because I've <clears throat> because I've got this standard interface that I'm using, right? Whenever I interact with an Azure table, it will set that key appropriately if there isn't a row key and uh, insert up the record. So let's restart and we'll get this running. Oh, and uh, um, you know what? Let me do some of the reformatting that Caparino and One Lion just suggested and many mangoes uh has a a question here for us so let me come back to that 
Um, so the suggestions on the user interface here, since we're doing Bootstrap, Caparino pointed out, add form control for Bootstrap full width. You're right. You're right. So I'm going to go back over to single clip razor, right? And on edit form here, I'm going to put a class, um, right? This is, right, um, right, edit form, form control. Um, well, I'm going to put that on the text area, right? Form, form control. I think I want to make it form control plain text, so that it it fills up nicely there. The button suggested taking that um, make this be a type equals submit, and use the on valid submit method instead of the on click here. Um. Yeah, on valid submit equals add comment. That should, that should improve that look. Let's see what happens here. And I should probably make that button, right? It, what is it, button primary or something like that? And it'll look like a proper bootstrap button, right? Um... I'd like to put a border on that. Um, uh, button, button primary, right? Um, form control. Isn't there like an outline here? Right? Uh, no. Form control plane removes border. So if we just make it form control, let's make it form control large. Um, but this I saw, um, I think I want to do not form can check, form check, form group. I think form group. See how all of that looks now. <laughs> Form control class and use LG for the responsive. Ah, there we go then. Yeah, I did LG and it didn't. Um, right, I'd like it to fill. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, let me know what I need to make that to make it the whole width here, because right now it's it's not. Uh, rats. Right. Um. <laughs> right. Is there? Class for a text area. Yeah, bootstrap forms will help a lot here to make that look look good. Now yeah, we're good. Um, right. I don't want it. I'd like it to be small, but I'd like it to be the full width. Yeah, like that. Class form control. I can give it. I can give it like two rows. Right? So if I just put form control on it, uh, rows equals, I'll give it three. What else do we got here? Purple border. Sure. Class equals uh, here. Uh, no. That's something else. Where's that coming from? He's got to be injecting that somewhere. Rounded corners? Mm. 
don't care. Text areas within forms, yeah, like that. Ah, there we go. That works. This is a test comment. Do the thing. Okay, it's over here. Darn it! Why is it blowing up? Why you do this? Try it again. Show me my error. Show me the error of my ways. Yeah, I know it's declared but not used. Upserts require a valid row key. It should have set that. Back over. Get me back on the hang here. Um, I don't want to refresh that just yet. Where'd it go? Aggregate likes get clipped by... Where'd it go? Add comment. There it is. This one right here. All right. Right? So, if obj is I set keys, key object, right? Key object, there's my clip comments, set keys. So, if row key is null or empty, if it is not null or empty, that's backwards. If it is null or empty, set it. So that's going to force a refresh of this page. Hopefully my API can be running before it reloads. Hopefully. Nope. <laughs> it's going to get cranky. Oh, I couldn't reach the thing. Yep, see, there it is. That's MD bootstrap, not bootstrap. Uh-huh. All right. And many mangoes asks... Are web devs supposed to know how to defend against all the common attacks like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, or do the frameworks and libraries you use have built-in defense? They have some built-in defenses. Um, they're automatically, right, when I output content, they're automatically, when I output content from, f through C Sharp, they automatically uh, HTML encode things. Excuse me. So... Um, this is a test comment. Where's that? All right, add or update. Here we go. Now I should have a row key that is, there it is. Get the cloud table. Insert it. There we go. And I, I should force the list of comments to refresh. Um, I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to force the refresh of the page and we should see it appear. I don't see it appear. Why don't I see it appear? Where'd it go? Gotta go find it. I'm gonna open my Azure Storage Explorer that'll let me hook up and, and peek right into my table storage. I'll be able to zoom right into it. I'm gonna navigate down appropriately into those. Yeah, PHP, uh, there might be some, um, there might be some uh, WordPress developers that would disagree with you. Here we go. Um, so inside my tables, clip comments. Did it save it? There it is. Okay. 
we're not getting clips yet on the screen. That's what's going on. So we can now, number three here, we're done. We can add new comments. But we need to load functions for those comments. We need, right? It didn't, it didn't load. I'm not calling that function yet. So over here, right? I got the clip. I need to now get the comments. So comments equals await uh, service. Um, I get comments for clip slug or I got an idea friends I've got an idea ooh look at that oh it's so good it's so good ooh, it gives me chills watch this um task models clip uh, models dot comment array like that watch this uh, why don't you like that thank you uh, hey where did my where did the name of that go thank you um, and the actual implementation here, right? Oh, don't just do that. Um, get clip equals that's a task. Um, var get comments equals client get from JSON async. Um, Something like that, right? Why don't you know what this is? Thank you. Um, slash API. Did I write a get comments? I, I don't think I did. Okay return task oh yeah oh yeah oh that feels so good why didn't that work um because get clip is a task that's going to return oh oh i um shoot Shoot, 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 shoot. Uh, how do I convert that? Um, and this is actually the wrong type now. Clip um, model dot comment array like that models. It's only a model uh, like that. Is it going to return that? No. Um, no, I did not buy the MS paint sweater. Nope. And I see Robert tables suggesting strongly suggesting we got to ver verify those um, submissions, the, the inputs. What do you see what ASP.NET has for you? Um, so when when I, uh, I'm gonna do a when all on these, right? Um, if I do it like that, I can do this as an await, right? And these are tasks. So then just do return, uh, get clip, Result, get comments, result, right? 
So I'm getting the results of those. Right, can we do... Mm, I think this is a little bit cleaner. Yeah, it didn't buy the MS Paint sweater. I'm not a fan of the... Like, I, I've... I have a couple ugly sweaters, but... Um, I don't go out of my way for the Microsoft ugly sweaters. I'm, I've got plenty of eSports jerseys. That's that's a thing. And I'm, I'm getting ready to design the 2021 Live Coders jersey. That's going to be a thing we've got to do in the next, the next month or two. So... Yeah. They support Girls Who Code? Fantastic. Um, that's right, they do. Yeah, it's... Um, don't these air... Yeah, they do. You know, they do. Goodbye. Get rid of that yellow stuff at the top. So that should be returning... Here, those values. So after you add a comment... I should refresh getting that. But I'm only going to refresh getting just that comment. Mm. So, task uh, models dot comments because there may be other um, get comments by slug string slug and go back to the actual implementation and I'm going to end up doing exactly that done so now I have it in both places so after I get um, get those, right? So I've done service, add comment, and I can probably, yeah, I should await that. Then I can await uh, service dot get comments by slug. Go get it for the slug. And I want to say uh, comments equals that, and it should automatically refresh. Um, why am I getting lines there? Oh, there we go. Good. Um, so the question from the question from where'd it go? From Robert Tables was, you should be sanitizing these. So I have the data validation happening up here to ensure that it doesn't hit any um, any issues being injected. Right, uh, that as it's being created, that validation is happening. On my service, inside of my function, right, I'm doing my validation here. Now, .NET has the ability for me to say these items are required. And because I'm doing Azure table storage, I don't have to worry about any kind of SQL injection because I'm not using SQL. So that's okay as well. For the content that I'm emitting on the Blazor page, like this, Blazor has built into the interactions a um, HTML in code. So if there is anything that's being generated that, that somebody's trying to do to um, insert and hook the JavaScript so that it goes and executes content, it'll it's already doing that encoding on its way out. So we should be okay on that. We can test and verify that, but it it should. Um, MDE box has a question here. Why am I not awaiting the get clips and get comments in, instead of task when all? Because I want them both to run at the same time. Go, do all of them at the same time. <laughs> So let them, I, I don't want to await, right? Because if I await them, it's going to wait for the first one to finish, then do the next one, right? Versus by passing them into task when all, it's going to run them and then 
pet hand back um hand back control to me when they're all completed i think i may have to do a task start in there I'm dead. i may need to um over here where'd it go right there right because these are tasks i may need to do get clip dot start get comments start so they're running on separate threads in the background right um right go fire that go fire the other X, xml http and let that fire away um dr gamester has a question about the sentiment up top here check that out the sentiment bar way up at the top there how is sentiment determined real easy uh it's taking a look at the chat room and um sending those up to azure um sentiment analysis and if you execute the sentiment command it explains exactly how it, it what the numbers being calculated are there are it we do not store chat the chat log but it is keeping track of the, the relative sentiment of the messages over the last five minutes so um cushy mushy asks a question here um are there any ui frameworks for for razor or blazer um there are some material frameworks for blazer that you can use i'm not too familiar with them you could say things that are really positive and you'll see right 87 percent positive now so um let me restart this and we should we should see it now start formatting the comments and we should be able to also when we add a comment see it pop onto the bottom automatically when the comment is added we still have to do the threading and we can tune the ui a little bit more but we're, we're really close to being done this for a first pass through this i think we're pretty close so dotnet watch socket connected uh, it's not going to reload because the server started. Here we go. Still, server's not... No, oh, I just got it. Start may not be called on a promise style task. Uh, okay. So you're telling me I can't do that? Fine. Rebuild, rerun it. Nope. 404 file. No oh, I don't have the get comments. I didn't write the get comments function. Right? Um, we can get rid of this. But that I haven't written yet. So back over to the Azure functions. Right? Um, so I have a way to add comments. I don't have a way to get comments. Fantastic, let's do it. Function name is going to be get comments. Public async task i action result. I action result wraps things like like your HTTP 200 and your 404 errors. Um, HTTP trigger authorization level anonymous. We're going to go get those and I'm going to set up my route so that it's um, slash API, get comments, slug, and that slug needs to be alpha. And uh, sure, that's an HTTP request. String slug i logger logger. Um, right, and if I, right, uh, oh, I forgot, I can get rid of these. Good, good, why don't you like that? Because I put a comma there when it should have been. Um, all right. Comments equals, um, await, get, 
get comments by slug. I need to write this method and pass the slug down into it. Return comments. Uh, return o new OK object result comments. And comments needs to return an array of comment objects. Right? So, right, it doesn't know what to do with this yet. Um, go over here. Task, and this is going to return a array of an array of those. You don't know what that is. Let me teach you. Yep. See. Good. And this, I need to implement that. So I'll just control and implement the interface. And this is going to this is going to be so easy. Oh my goodness. Electric Havoc! Electric Havoc just resubscribed for 22 months. Almost there. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Um, I see a, a couple of questions here. Yeah, decorators for function names. Absolutely. It's because it, it's telling the function's runtime how to execute this. Because the function's runtime is... Um, is not .NET specific. Let me pin a couple of these questions. I'm on a roll here. Give me a second here while I finish this. Um, right, I want to go to comments repository. I'm going to get all for partition because the partition is the... is the slug, right? Um, I'm going to... I'm going to I'm going to just await that just return that collection right um, oh wait a sec those return clip comments rats I am going to need to await it because I'm going to um, turn these around and say um, select um, Um, I need a to comment method on these. Or, right, do I have new... No, I can't do it that way. Because it doesn't know what clip comment is. Um, yeah, I need to comment. Where am I? What? Stop! Nope. To, I need to write a to comment method on this. Then I can cast it to array. Return that, but I need one of these. Jump through to that. Right? No, it's right there. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. Um, then I can get rid of this and just change this to hang on, hang on control H not in the current document in the current block much better don't need this that should just work now. Yes. Why don't you like this? Um, because I forgot the async. Good, got it. Um, so this now good. Let me come back to the questions over here. Vitlol asks, is it async behavior you want already? Default if you just await. Well, if you await, it releases the thread and it will come back and, and receive it when that process you're awaiting is done. So when we're running inside of Blazor, um, I'd rather have it make both requests at the same time and have it return. It can do those in parallel. So I do want it async. 
It's not necessarily async when you do an await though. Do you know any library for automating graphical user interfaces like auto IT? I'm not familiar with auto IT. Can you give me a link to what that is? Maybe I can point something out to you. Um, no, the request does not start as soon as I start the function. Well, it is, but I'm starting the second function. I'm not awaiting it, right? Look, it is starting that, and it's starting that one also. Don't block here and get there, right? If I put an await in front of this, it'll block here and not go to that one, right? The await blocks is what you're what you're seeing. Um, when you put, yeah. Build error, what do we got a build error? Identifier expected, who? Oh. Try it again. Got about 20 minutes left on the stream today. I think we're pretty good. We're going to be pretty good on having this built and ready to go. And, yep, my Blazor app is still building properly, so rats. There we go. Oh, no! An error occurred while creating the route for get comments. Um, oh, what? there's an extra slash in there. Rats. Rats, that's not going to work. Do, 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 do. That needs to go away. Restart. No, it, yes, it, doing the two awaits would work, right? If I did await on both of these, yes, it would work, but it blocks and isn't going to evaluate the next function. It, it's not even going to look at it. There we go, and why well, didn't get my comments? Value cannot be null, source, comment display, get child comments. Ah, I know where that is. Comment display, get child comments. Ta-da. And... Well, that one actually, I think we're okay because in order to display comments, you had comments. Um, so order by descending to array, um, new models, comment, empty array. It should have returned, but I don't know why it isn't. Go reload. Show me. Still no. Value cannot be null parameter source. <laughs> where comment. Enumerable where comment. Here. All right, so maybe I do need the question mark there. Maybe it's trying to render it before the comments came down. Mm, don't think so. Ah, there it is. Good. Fantastic. We've got our first comment, so I should be able to add another comment. Um, uh, here. This is... No, I want it to be different. Wow, I can't type. Here's another comment. Wrote it. Oh, I'm in a breakpoint. Continue. Here's another comment. Oh, I should blank out after you add the comment, right? Uh, here. Do, 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 do. Add comment. Comments equals this. Um, and now I can say uh, new comment. No. Comment. No. Content equals string empty. Refresh. 
Um, I'm happy to answer your question there. F17 CH. Um, oh, I got to come back to uh, the op code. But F17CH asks, do all browsers allow for direct WebAssembly to be processed, or do some only allow JavaScript and do the compile themselves? Um, they all allow it to be processed. You can turn it on and off. Um, just like you did JavaScript, you can tell it not to process. WebAssembly, there's a there's a switch in the browser. And I actually think it, it obeys the same scripting... Um, Right, the same scripting options for under privacy, right? Privacy and security, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cookies and site data, forms and autofill, history, address bar, permissions, right? It, it's like a general scripting permission and it also shuts off. It, not just JavaScript, but... Um, um, fonts, applications... Malicious scripts. Um, I guess it's wrapped up in here. But, right, it, it won't execute WebAssembly in the same way that it won't execute JavaScript. Uh, yes, WebAssembly is supported in all browsers. It's an HTML5 standard. If they don't support it, they don't support HTML5. So, let me put it this way. If you have an old enough browser that it doesn't support WebAssembly... Um, 1999 called and they'd like their web browser back. America Online called and they want you to stop dialing in. So, um, I'm, I'm happy to throw a banner up on the top of the screen that says get a new browser because you're not running a browser that's been written in the last five years. Ten years. So, there are people who are still running Netscape. Um, please, give me a break. Um, uh, this is a test. Uh, JavaScript alert. Hey, now. No. Doesn't work. Um, nope. It automatically HTML encodes it. So, fantastic. I have basic commenting working. Last piece. When those comments are added, <clears throat> I want to go and count those and put a record on on the update the record on the clip itself, so I don't have to go and count those records. <clears throat> I still need to put a like button. I still need to put the summary information on the bottom here. That's that's kind of child's play. We've already got that information. We knows how to do that. Smab's been watching in Mosaic. Yeah, right? Netscape is the get off my lawn browser. Don't make me record another get off my lawn, but for Netscape. Why didn't it play that? Why didn't it play that? It's not playing it when I click it. I don't know why. It should have played it. Yes, near MySpace page. There you go. See, that wasn't... I... No. No. Does it work on 3DS or the Switch browser? Um, I tell you, I will tell you it does work on the Oculus Rift browser, which is more than I can say for GitHub. But I digress. Um, oh yeah, I was using a keyboard with my Oculus Quest. And I was on GitHub yesterday. That was totally a thing. Um, and it's so meta. So, so meta. Um, Alright, I need to do the function back office processing here. <clears throat> 
to go and load that data. So what I'm going to do is open this up. I have a queue already for light clip. I have a light clip. Po do I have anything in the poison queue? I Wow. Um, those should have been processed properly. I wonder why they weren't. Clear it. It's fine. So I'm going to create a, a queue here for a uh, new comment. Uh, why can't you create my queue? Because it's... There it is. Um, so what I'm going to do... In my function here, I already have a bit when you click like right here that drops an entry on the queue. I'm going to create an entry on the other queue to go and do that when you add a comment. I don't care about it when you edit a comment. Right? So you've successfully done that. I'm going to go connect out here. And I need another queue. Just because I don't want to have it out there. Um, and I'm going to call this uh, new comment. And I believe, right, I called it new comment. Just so it's hard-coded and I don't have to have that um, magic string hanging out there. Okay. So go find it, add it, done. And I'm going to go into my services. No. Where is it? The back office that I wrote. Here. Um, inside of this function, aggregate likes for clip, I'm going to do the exact same Thing. Oh, where did that go? No, up here. Um, Q. New comment. New comment. And I'm going to call this aggregate. Aggregate comments for clip. And I'm going to give it the exact same name. Be nice if it would pick that up, but it doesn't. Um, and I'll end up writing the exact same method that does just about the exact same thing. Oh, I'm in debug. You're not going to let me. You're going to be grouchy about this. Right? That's fine. Over here, implement that method, and this is easy, because I'm doing just about the exact same thing. Comments equals await, instead we're going to comments repository, get all for that partition, count it, right? I need an async, thank you. Uh, Clipper repository get for. I'm just going to change that. Uh, clip dot. Right, comments is. Yep, just a long. Done. Adder update. Um, <laughs> rebuild that. Make sure that that runs. Yeah, Azure capitalization is, um, and the the naming requirements on Azure are um, Azure services are a little um, annoying. Um, I think this is just new uh, new comment. Pull it out of that object. Twitch clip slug. 
Yes, please, run. Run, 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 run. We'll commit, and I will not, I will not deploy to the production space, but I will commit, and I'll be ready to do some updates and get this deployed. So, okay, the API service is running. So now if I go back over here, F12. Um, this is a new comment. And saved, this is a new comment. I could put some sort of an animation up here to indicate that we're saving. Um, and let me go over to my Azure storage and it should be sitting inside my queue. Why don't I see it inside my queue? Nothing should have processed that yet. Send message to the... Rats! I wrote it into the like clip queue. Which was probably processed out on out by the production queue. Right, it should not have ended up in the poison queue. Ooh, it just did. Is my Azure function not running? I'm gonna need to dig into that. This needs to go to queue new comment so that it appears in the right place. That tells me that the Azure function that's out there isn't picking it up. Hmm. Right, my back office function isn't running properly. No, Twitch does not like hash bangs. It really doesn't. This is yet another comment, and I can clear these out. Okay, this is yet another comment. If I go down here into my new comment repository queue, right? There it is. And it's got the slug there that I'm going to be I'm going to be working with. Um I wanna run I wanna run this one and see what's going on. Run this locally. See what it's choking on. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Somebody else is running on that port. My bad. Let's see what we get here. And then we'll call it a day. <laughs> Missing value for Azure Web Job Storage. All right. Um, let me just move this for right now. I th thought I had an entry for that. I do have a uh, entry for Azure Web Job Storage. You know what? I'm not including that file in this project. Um, copy of newer. Ah, oh, come on. We had that one. All right, let me start the back office. We should see it, dequeue it, and count. Okay, so here goes the, the back office functions, which are gonna do some of that async processing and A debugger operation? Uh, no. I don't 
don't know what it's doing. Whoa! Um, binding parameter clip slug. Oh boy, what do we do here? Um, wow. All right, I see what the problem is. Um, input is not a valid base64 string as it contains a non-base64 character or an illegal character among the padding characters. Whoa! Whoa! Come back over here, refresh that. Now I know why things ended up in that poison queue and I should have Right, a poison queue over here now. Yeah, look at that. And that's the one that I just dropped in there. Um, it, it, it's UTF-8. I mean, let's, right, if we go base 64. Oh, look. Hmm. getting right I'm getting some crummy characters coming through why is that yeah I need to convert the string to UTF-8 before I jam it in there is what it looks like so not this function right I named them both clip function which is probably a bad idea this Um, right, utf8 dot, come here you, uh, using system text unicode, uh, no, system text um, to no, oh not. my. What? Right? Um, no. Right? I should be able to... I thought there was a two... Why am I thinking this? With the, with... Um... No, I don't want to go between those. I want to go system text UTF-8 encoding UTF-8 no, and that's references so uh, get bytes from a string get string from bytes Oh, what's the quick way to do this? C sharp convert to UTF eight. Right, encoding dot UTF eight. That's what I thought. But using system text, UTF eight dot and now yeah. Right? How to convert a string to UTF eight. Right? Uh, equals this encoded bytes equals that right if I do get bytes and I pass in that string now I'm sending bytes I don't want to be sending bytes I want to be sending a string but I'm getting these extra characters on the front of that All right so if I do encoding utf8 get string on that All right so let's run that hey the bandit Dave hello Right, it's...
it should be a no-op, but there's rogue characters coming through on this. Right? I mean... If we change that to base 64, look. Right? There's the beginning of the string, and... Pfft, I've got two rogue characters at the front of it. So... Why am I getting those extra characters is the problem. Right, it's going to go, it's going to add that, and we're going to get an entry over here. Now, it hasn't tried to DQ this yet. Here's the message. Expensive, poor herbs, Ritz, Mitz, and... There they are. It is the bite order mark. Yeah, it sure looks like the bite order mark in the front. Um... Um, in, um, Azure Q, um, base 64 error. The Azure storage queues NuGet package and use the following to code to convert it back. Base64 encode. Are you kidding? There we go. UTF-8 and cast it to a base 64 and what's um, this one thanks feature request base 64 encoding helpers yeah but you broke everybody API app is the one that generates the messages. Now it's ASP.NET Core, Core 5 and it's, yeah. We were using this. Notice all of our messages are ending up in the poison queue. Bingo! Yeah. They broke queues. And they did it about a week ago. Three days... Yep. Yep, they broke queues. So the recommendation is to do a base 64 encode here. Robert Tables is still here. Yeah. That is a very large sized oof. Right, and, and the fact that it's just a string, right, that this send message, sending just a string, should be piece of cake. Oh, it's just a string. Send it. But having to wrap this right, right here. Base 64, encode it. Right, so then... Yeah. 
yeah, that should that should come back then properly. If I go up here to this one, not send message, but base 64 encode. That is, that's a big problem. Why am I sending string? Because I'm sending just a string. It's just a string, It's it, right? Let the queue figure out what to do with it. I don't care. Let the let the Q object figure that out. Uh, I've got an extra paren there. For me as an API, I'm, it's a string. You go format it and figure it out. No, send message async, um, string message text. If I'm sending a string of message text, that's right. It's not about the string. It's about the message. You, client, gave me an API to send just a string. So you, client, format that string appropriately for the protocol. The API that you give me as a developer says I can send a string. You're dropping the string. So I agree with you. It's about sending the message. And it should format the message appropriately for the service that it's providing a facade to. You're absolutely right. The message should be processed appropriately. However you broke it oh there's three overloads yeah 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 i can send an object into that and it'll and it'll process appropriately um i'm going to um i'm going to clear the poison queue here and i'm also going to come over here to why do i have both of these open clear that queue also yes goodbye let's uh fire a message back in there um another test message and oh I don't I don't have the back end service. I have which service do I have running? Yeah, there we go. It put that it put a message in there it is. And if we look at this, right? So there's the message in base 64, it's that text. If we take it to UTF-8, it's even uglier. That's fine. And if we now stop that service and start the other service. I'd really like to be able to run both services, but I can't. Let's see what happens here. Because it should DQ, and we're over time here. We'll wrap up and call it here. Let's see what it does. Do, 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 do. Yes. Executed. Looks like it succeeded. So if I go back over here, I look at my tables for twitch clip i should have there we go eight comments we got it we got it <laughs> all right and we've got our our bits deploy fixed here with that base 64 i can't deploy that from this branch but i feel like i should cherry pick and push that out from the other branch um, let's, uh, let's wrap up here. Let's call this a day and commit these into my, um, uh, into my working branch and yeah, move things along. Um, and I should probably patch with that base 64 bit into my clip function. No matter. Um, I'm going to go up one here. I'm going to add all the things that we changed. I'm going to commit... Um, first pass at adding the comment system. It's not quite done, but it's a first pass. It's going. No, we didn't hit the voice changer at all today. Somebody has to redeem that in order for that. It, it did look like a byte order mark. Um, yes, do that. Do it. Push it up there. And there we go. Visual Studio channels doing the Xamarin stand-up. Absolutely, we should raid them. And pass along the, the, the .NET fun to our friends over on the Visual Studio channel. Let's set up our raid. Let's put it out there so that we can get started and connect with those folks. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate you tuning in today. We did a lot of work on our comment system for ClipTalk. We started setting up the new user interface so that you can click into a clip 
and see all the comments down the side. We've got a little bit of CSS responsiveness in there so that it'll stack when you, when you shrink the size of the browser. We've got some more work to do on making that mobile friendly, but we're getting there. We're gonna get ready to head over to the Visual Studio channel. Over there in the chat room, if you are a subscriber, please copy the top line of text from the bot. If you're not, copy the second line. We're gonna announce ourselves loud and proud, and we're gonna scare the heck out of the folks over there on the Visual Studio channel. I'm going to set up that raid right now. It's the Xamarin stand up there talking about .NET with mobile devices. Great opportunity for you to ask the folks that make Xamarin about all the cool things that are going on with .NET on iOS and Android. I really appreciate you tuning in today. It's It's been a lot of fun writing code with you. And um, we will talk to you on Sunday um, as we write more code. We have some more fun. But get ready to say hello to the, our friends over on the Visual Studio channel. And I will see you Sunday. Take care.